Joey Malden from Motor Racing Outreach offers today's invocation. Let's pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we are so blessed to live in the greatest nation on the face of this earth. And the freedoms that we enjoy here are because of the men and women, both at home and abroad, in uniform, that are protecting them. We ask your hand of protection and your blessings upon them, as well as their families. For the drivers and the teams, the officials today, watch over them and keep them safe. And for all these fans, may today be a day full of great memories. Father, may your peace and your presence be with us all. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Here to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, please welcome Lauren Hart, accompanied by Ashton Johns, a student from the Scranton School for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Children. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Ryan Newman and family, Kyle Busch, the pole sitter. Drivers ready to go, and so are we from Pocono, Pennsylvania.
Chevrolet, the official vehicle of NASCAR, is the most awarded car company three years in a row. Learn more at Chevrolet.com. Outstanding weather. It was cooler yesterday, has heated up in the Pocono Mountain Range today and in and around the racetrack. There's a lot to do for family, friends, and the drivers and their competitors. With Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers welcoming you back. And checking the drivers, some later developments. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the upset winner at Talladega, they have to move to the rear of the field for an unapproved body modification. Generally, that's just moving a panel on the body to try to get better aerodynamics. NASCAR saw something they didn't like. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has had some success here in the past, looking for that first win this year. He's at the back after an engine change. Yeah, had a problem getting it out of third gear yesterday in practice, or excuse me, Friday, and blew the engine up. And we talked about Martin Truex Jr. You, you like his chances here today. He's also in the back with an engine change. And that's great for us, us race fans, us yeah. watching on TV today, because it's going to be so fun to watch the strategy and the speed of this 78 car and how they get to the front, because, Chris, they will get to the front. Interesting hearing Joey Logano's story about how the race at Pocono changed his life, and the odds makers in Las Vegas have made the two car, Brad Keselowski, the slight favorite over Larson and Truex. Well, this just in, Chris, down on pit road. Everybody's talking about the speed of Brad Keselowski, so that could be your favorite today from the garage area. Yeah, he's had a couple of rough rides with Rex in the last few. Matt Kenseth searching for his first victory of this season, as is Joe Gibbs racing, but they've got Kyle Busch on the pole, so let's take you back trackside and get ready to get this thing rolling. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome our Grand Marshals, Exalta Senior Vice President Joe McDougall and Julia and Alyssa McDougall. On behalf of Exalta's 14,000 employees around the world, we're happy to say, Drivers, start your engines! And the weather outstanding should make for an outstanding race today here in the Poconos. We'll be watching along with you, the guys who will take you through it upstairs as they always do. Jeff Gordon, Darrell Waltrip, and Mike Joy. Mike? Thanks, Chris, and hi, everybody. This has long been one of my favorite racetracks for many years, closest one to my New England home. But because it presents such unique challenges, three different length straightaways, three different radius corners, three different bankings in the corners, and unique on an oval, you got to be a little shifty. No, you really do. All these drivers will be shifty today. <laughs> the shifting is fun here because you use it for passing gear. That's what I like to think about that third gear. You're going to use that coming off the third turn. You're going to downshift going into the first turn. But the other thing you can use it for, put that baby in high gear and don't shift. You'll save fuel and you can go a lot further on a tank of fuel if you don't shift. I was surprised, Jeff, to hear that they run the biggest brakes they run anywhere here. Especially now with the lower downforce package that we're seeing. We're seeing high speeds, over 200 miles per hour down into turn one heavy brake use gonna be a lot of temperature that they're gonna have to deal with and make sure those brakes last to the end of this race the other thing that's a good challenge here that I can't wait for is when we get the green flag and they're gonna fan out four and five wide there's two different mindsets on restarts in this original start aggressiveness go down there let's make something happen or be conservative let's get clean on the downshift go clean through turns one and it's those conflicting mindsets it makes it really <laughs> exciting for us to watch and might create that opportunity for one of those drivers to make that winning move well we're going to see both of those play out today take your pick who do you like kyle bush comes in as the favorite truex and keselowski larson some of the legends honored at Pocono outside the entrance tunnel. Everybody's ready to race in the mountains of Pennsylvania.
every driver's personality really comes out at this racetrack. Be smart, be patient, and have some fun. Do it rock and roll today, buddy. Go have some fun. This track is one place where you really want to hang it out. Let's show who we are and what we can do here today. Such a tough, challenging racetrack. Oh boy. There's nowhere more fun to drive. This track is your biggest competition. Ready to race and a nearly full house here in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series race from Pocono on FS1. Beginning with Kyle Busch, they roll out down this long, wide front straightaway. Where do you want to be best? Turn one, designed to emulate the mile and a half at Trenton, New Jersey, banked 14 degrees. That connects the track's two longest straightaways, and you go to turn two. Mirror image of Indianapolis Motor Speedway's 90 degree corners, banked eight degrees, and built in 1899, the Milwaukee Mile, with only six degrees of banking on the final corner. The main straight here. Well, there's the straightaway at Bristol, 650 feet. <laughs> Even at Charlotte, it's nearly 2,000 feet. That's nearly half of what Pocono's main straight is. And it leads to the Long Pond Straight in itself, as long as the backstretch at Daytona. Let's have a look at our fresh from Florida starting lineup. Same front row as Dover. Two Toyotas, Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr., who's changed engines and will have to start the race at the rear. Matt Kenseth, third in the Toyota. Ryan Blaney is the fastest forward. He rolls off for it. Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, two forwards in row number three. Kyle Larson is the fastest Chevrolet, along with teammate Jamie McMurray. We say we dial up a yesterday's winner and see how he feels about today. Brad Kozlowski at CW, got me there, my bud. And Brad at CW, you got me, buddy? Yes, sir, how are you, DW? Oh, doing well, my man. Hey, you came from behind yesterday, great finish, won that race yesterday. Is that gonna help you today? Did you learn anything that will help the car in the race today for you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, learn never to give up, you know, these races, they, uh get away from you sometimes, but uh, it's going to give up to you. Got a chance at it always, man. That's what's great about racing. Well, you're one of the favorites to win today. Your car's been pretty good. Uh, the stages, how do you think that'll affect things? Uh, I think we're going to see a completely different race today here at Pocono with uh, respect to the stages and the track position. The big thing here is uh, for the fans at home, and you know this, DW, you can pit under green and not lose a lap. So. When you get towards the end of those stages, you know, some of those guys don't really have a lot to lose that uh, aren't going to get any points, and they can really cycle things up, so that should be fun to see. All right, buddy. We'll make it a clean sweep for the captain. They won last night. You won yesterday, and, uh, you know, all you got to do is do your job today, and he'll be a happy man. Sounds good. We're going to do our best with our life for it. Thanks for uh, checking in, and thanks to all the viewers for watching. Brad Kozlowski starts in row three. Back in row number 10, Jimmy Johnson, who yesterday tied his boyhood hero, last week that is, Cale Yarborough, for sixth on NASCAR's all-time win list at the track where he is the master. Dover International Speedway, 83 career wins. He had the Cale Yarborough commemorative helmet on. His helmet maker had to rush one for duty this week with Daryl's image on one side and Bobby's on the other, tied at 84. And you know what's interesting? Jeff Gordon won his 84th race here. And if Johnson could win today, it would be his 84th win at the same track. Wow. What do you think the chances of, of, of him winning today? I mean, he's pretty deep in the field. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Huh? That's going to be fun to watch. Well, you know, last week we expected him to win, and he did. <laughs> today, the verdict's out. And Daryl Wallace Jr. should be fun to watch in his Monster Energy Cup Series debut. He came up through racing legends cars on the quarter mile at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Ransom Arcus and trucks, Xfinity, and now he has the seat of the king until Eric Almirola is healthy enough to return. Jamie Little kicks off our pit road win. 
this is certainly the biggest moment in Bubba Wallace's career as he gets ready to start his first ever cup race. He told me this morning he woke up at 2.30 a.m. ready to go. He's ready to race. This has been a great experience for him. It's gotten a lot of media attention, a lot of national media attention. But he told me there's no pressure. It's all about fun. And if you can see the smile on his face since he climbed into that car on Friday, you can tell he's taking it all in. He feels blessed to be in this opportunity, and he's enjoying the ride. Matt? Jamie, the challenging weekend for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and the 17 team has only gotten worse. They struggled in qualifying, knocking down the 23rd fastest time. But after the car passed pre-race inspection, NASCAR notified the team that they would be forced to the back for unapproved body modifications, namely in the wheel well fender opening area and the side skirts going to the back. Now, certainly, they're going to have to call an audible on strategy. Chris Neville? Well, 2017 has definitely been refreshing for Clint Boyer. But in recent weeks, crew chief Mike Bugaravich said, we felt like other teams were pulling ahead. But at Dover, he said, we finally found the speed that we were missing. We also found a mechanical failure. Talking to Clint before the race, he said, we've changed a lot going into the day. So he feels pretty confident. In fact, he had that confident Clint Boyer smile. Mike. Thanks, Chris. Shifting at Pocono offers reward, but comes with risk. In practice, Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to upshift from third to fourth gear. Watch and listen. That was the sound of an engine self-destructing as it went to second gear, 12,600 RPM kaboom. Larry McReynolds. Yeah, Mike, these cars have a four-speed standard transmission. And outside of a road course, this is the only track where a driver will be shifting several times a lap. So let's go to our Ford Performance Cutaway car, and let me show you that four-speed transmission. One thing about it is look at the shift levers. They're not down the side of the race car. They're on top or on side of the transmission. But they have straight-cut gears right here, and there are no synchronizer rings. For that reason right there, these drivers can shift that transmission without using a clutch. You do it with RPM. They are very durable, but you're still concerned when you're shifting about six times a lap. Let's take a look at the weather today here at Pocono. It is absolutely just beautiful. Hardly a cloud in the sky. Little bit of breeze, 84 degrees, but look at that track temperature right there, 133 degrees. Now about the race analysis today, 160 laps, 400 miles, stage one and two. 50 laps, the final stage of the checkered flag, 60 laps, pit road speed, 55 miles per hour. Pay close attention to that. That fuel window, 36 to 40 laps, and the grip level, a three to four. You've heard everybody reporting to the rear of the field for engine changes, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Martin Trex Jr., and unapproved adjustments after going through inspection, the 17 car mic of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to the rear of the field. Thanks, Larry. We listened in on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Attitude and effort. Keep both those up today. We're going to overcome anything. We're going to the rear for, and we're going to charge back up this front. Focus forward, focus hard, focus on the next opportunity to be great. Be great today, guys. Thank you. Simple. Now let's explain what's happened at the front row. Kyle Bush is your pole sitter. He is elected to start in the outside lane because second place qualifier Martin Truex Jr. had to go to the back. That moves the entire inside lane up one. Uh, Matt Kenseth will share the front row for the green flag with his teammate. And that's right his teammate. Yeah, I think that's a good move right there. We were riding on board there with Dale Earnhardt Jr. The race begins here at Pocono before the green flag stops. We saw Kyle uh, starts. The, we saw Kyle Busch on the apron trying not to spill fuel out of the overflow. We saw Dale Earnhardt Jr. shutting the engine off already under the pace laps. That's how important strategy and fuel mileage is going to be today. 39 cars round that flat turn three and address themselves to the starting line. Pace car is in. Well, she's tricky, and she's got three different turns, and uh, it's going to be a little bit of a fun afternoon here with this beautiful weather. Boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing, boys! Wow, already fanning out three and four wide. I know, but Kenson, good grief. He never took off. Yeah, being up on the front row, that didn't work out so well for Matt Kenseth. He did not get the start he was looking for. No, I don't think that's the way they had that one planned. Kenseth falls to sixth. 
maybe seventh as Logano moves alongside. Ryan Blaney got a great start. He's in second behind Kyle Busch entering the tunnel turn. I really think that's what Kyle Busch was trying to avoid, putting that 21 car up on the front row with him. And they know how fast that car is. He's led a lot of laps this year, Ryan Blaney has. I think Kyle was worried about uh, having that 21 breathing down his neck. I think something we're going to really have to keep an eye on. This is the first time all weekend long where cars have run side by side. Not a lot of downforce in these cars this year. When you get on a big, fast racetrack like this, I've heard a lot of drivers complain about getting really loose side by side or getting into the corner, and, and we may see that really become a trouble. I got really tight going into turn one because I just went in there at 204. Oh, yeah. 204 miles an hour off into that first turn. And look at Ricky Stenhouse, the 17 in turn three, right down on the flat, it's below the yellow line and in the grass. That car was porpoising around, moving around a lot even before he got in the, got the wheel off there. Well, he bit. was on using the apron to get the car to turn real low here. I don't know if he hit. Take it back out there, two outside. I don't know if he, he just was trying to avoid where that grass was to keep the splitter from ripping off the car, or if he just hit a bump that knocked him up the racetrack. That's what it looked like. The car just really started bouncing up and down, and it got him a little loose, got him in the grass, and almost lost it. Jimmy Johnson on the move, plus four, and he's the first car double wide. Now here comes Hamlin getting past the Petty 43 of Bubba Wallace. And we talked to Denny Hamlin pre-race, and we saw it right there. You saw Darrell Wallace Jr. really dive in there, almost get to the rear bumper of Denny Hamlin. Denny likes to drive in really easy into the corner, set the car into the banking, and then get a big launch up off the corner. And you saw that style right there from Bubba's in-car. I thought what was interesting, he says they hadn't won here since they repaid. We didn't shift here for a long time. The races he won were races where you didn't have to shift. And I don't know if that's just not played into his driving style, but the shifting has changed his way of racing here. Matt Kenseth has settled in eighth position. What happened to him on the start? Sorry about that 41. I just didn't want to have a sneak attack yet. I don't know. I must have been wrong here or something. I don't know. I must have missed something there. I wasn't paying attention to. Matt? And at driver intros, Kyle Busch and Matt Kenseth had a long discussion just about the start, and especially with the 78 of Truex going to the back and why Kyle chose the lane he did, talking about how they were going to roll up to the green, but he just, like you said, just had a, a little miscue pickup. You know something, Mike, I think we ought to keep an eye on today. It's been windy here all weekend, really windy. I would watch for debris flying around and getting on somebody's grill, and it usually gets on the leaders first. That's right, the leader cleans the track for everybody, especially on a big speedway like this. I think Bubba Wallace is getting quite the education here <laughs> early in this race. These Cup guys, they are super aggressive. And, and, you know, it's amazing how they know how the experience to tune in their race car for the drop of the green flag. Well, I think what Bubba's learning is on a start or a restart, everybody is so aggressive. And he's trying to be cautious. Wow, look and at all that And that's just not debris. working out. I know, no, I saw a lot of stuff flying around already. 16th place there, Benny Hamlin, Paul Menard, Clint Boyer, and Chase Elliott. Mike, I always thought, and I think Jeff will agree, I always felt like Pocono was a, a judge of horsepower because it takes a lot of horsepower to push a car through the air here down these long straightaways. The guy with the most power, that usually shows up here. The guy with the most horsepower. Oh, look at this crossover. Whoa. I love that classic crossover move. That's Pocono in a nutshell. You go through the tunnel turn, and if you overdrive the entry, you slide up the racetrack. Well, 22 to Pitt Road. Right side, look up. The right side, look up. Well, Joey must have had a vibration. They're going to change all four. Jamie. That's right, the vibration, and he's not sure where it's coming from. So the bad luck continues for the 22. They thought they had pretty decent speed here, but having to come in early, you heard the call for four just to be on the safe side, change all four and make sure they're all tight. Remember this team had trouble with loose wheels earlier in the year, a couple of races. Uh, so it looks like it's bitten them again today. He was in sixth. Now we saw that debris flying around. I think some of it made it onto Chase Elliott's grill. Gone. Yeah, it looks Hard to clear. tell if it's a black piece of bag, trash bag. 
Well, the good news is he's in traffic, and by being in traffic, if he can get up close to somebody, that'll clean the grill. Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty clean. I think whatever was there, it, it already blew off. Oh, oh yeah. my left God! Rear. Left rears. Wow. Shredded. Just shredded. Now, could that be low air pressure? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a minimum air pressure that Goodyear recommends, but to find some extra grip and, and especially if they plan on going long run here, that lower air pressure can certainly give you some performance. But it comes at a, a, a big risk of you could lose the sidewall in that tire. Yeah, the left sides give you a problem here because over the tunnel, you have a real bad habit of dropping the left side off the track a little bit. We saw what Stenhouse did here in turn three. You use that apron to get the car to turn, and sometimes it uh, causes you a problem. Now, Logano was close enough to the front when he pitted. He was in sixth place, that he's still on the lead lap. Let's ride with Kevin Harvick down the front straightaway. Look at that speed climb, 204. That's 204 miles off, miles an hour off into that first turn, the Trenton turn. Fortunately, it has 14 degrees banking. What, what impresses me is it's 204 at the point of braking, all the way down to about 145, 150 miles per hour once they're in the center of the corner. That's how much you have to slow down to use the brakes here. Back up to fourth gear. Now you'll see some drivers will choose not to use the downshift or, or shift all the way around this racetrack. Definitely here in turn three, de definitely down in turn one, but not always in the tunnel turn, but because he was behind traffic, he used third gear to try to get an advantage and make that pass happen. Now, I like to call it passing gear because that's what you really use that for when you, uh, when, when you, when you got it there. Guys, one thing we may see here, remember the fuel window is somewhere around 36 to 40 laps. So what we might see, we get to about lap 12, 13, or 14 right there. As long as you are about 11 to 12 seconds behind the leader, the window opens to get to stage one. I think we're going to see some guys hitting pit road for a pit stop. 16 to 17 seconds if you're going just right side. Thanks, Larry. Kyle Busch has led every lap so far. From Ryan Blaney and Brad Keselowski. Yeah, tricks. No, he got a great.
11 laps complete. Martin Truex Jr. trying to get that piece of uh, paper off his grill. It's right up behind Ty Dillon and does so. But we saw a lot of water coming out the overflow. At the, there it is at the base of the windshield on the right side for some time before he got rid of that piece of paper that was blocking his grill opening. We'll keep an eye on that and on his teammate, Eric Jones. Jamie. Eric Jones is saying he has a vibration right now, and he's not sure if it's a wheel or perhaps brake shake, but he said the longer he goes, the better it seems to get. So they're definitely keeping an eye on that as he's uh, worked his way into the top ten now. It, it could be brake shake because you use a lot of brake to slow the car down. Then you got these long, long straightaways that everything cools back down, and so you shock those rotors every time you slam on the brakes. Ryan Blaney to pit road. Goodyear engineers had a look at Joey Logano's tire. Could not tell if it was a puncture or some other problem there. And here comes Blaney and Jamie. And you see him making his way down. Yes, and Goodyear was down here in the 22 pit, and they just can't tell. They said this early in the race to have a tire go like that, there must have been a puncture, but they're not sure. Blaney, they're going to change tires on this car. Been a pretty good one early on, but the strategies are going to be mixed up. So right side is only for the 21. The window is open right there. Yeah. The window is open to make it to the end of stage one. 15th place. Denny Hamlin, Clint Boyer. Yeah, that was a scheduled stop in the 21. Look for some more to start coming to pit road. Yep. Good strategy. Matt. Mike, Jimmy Johnson told me he needed to be 14 seconds or closer to the leader to make this strategy work. That's exactly where he is. Now, he's pitting right off turn three, right next to the 20 team of Matt Kenseth. Now, Overstreet and Malik, the car chiefs for these two teams, just discussed when they would be pitting so that way they can work together. Meanwhile, the two of Brad Keselowski, his biggest issue was free on entry to turn three, but he was tight off of turn three, losing a lot of time coming down this long front straightaway. And I believe he just took right side tires just to like be quick in and out under green. Yep. Well, they've got the they've got yesterday's experience to help them make decision about what they want to do today for these stages. So that might have been a pretty good call. Now remember, all these drivers who started in the top 12 started with at least six laps on their tires from three rounds of qualifying. Biggest mover from the start of the race. We'll look at the drivers that started out back for one reason or another, including Dale Earnhardt Jr., who is up 16 positions. Here comes Matt Kenseth to pit road. Matt? And Kenseth is in. Crew going to work. Clean tear off off the windshield. Solid stop on the right side. Going to be a four tire change. The 48 should be coming next time by. Kenseth is away. Hey, I have a crew chief question for you. So if nobody had pitted yet, everybody just kept running, running, running. Would you be would you be the first one that wants to make that move, or do you wait and see what other people are going to do? I think they all had their plan coming into this race, Daryl. And at the minute that window opens, I'm coming. I think the other plan may be to split the stage in half. We'll start to see them coming about lap 24, 25. 50 laps is stage one. As Ricky Stenhouse moves up to 21st. Let's check on the Chip Ganassi cars uh, beginning at third place. Chris Neville. Yeah, boy, Jamie McMurray having a good run here. He is talking about the wind blowing down the front straightaway towards turn one. He said the back end of that car as he turns into turn one, getting away from him. But as the air pressure in those tires have come up, he said his biggest issue right now, the one car a little bit too tight, but we're in the tunnel turn. Kevin Harvick does a big, uh, big burnout leaving pit road at lap 16. Larry, this 14 seconds that Matt talked about with Jimmy Johnson, I would imagine you need to be that close to the leader within 14 seconds to be able to pit without losing a lap to change four tires. And that's very borderline, Mike, very borderline. Yesterday, it was about 12 seconds. Well, here's your leader, Kyle Busch, giving up the lead to come to pit road. Older brother, Kurt, last year's winner, should pick up the lead here. Matt. 
And Mike, Chad Canals called Jimmy Johnson in. They're going to make a chassis adjustment on the 48. A little snug, he says, rolling through all three corners, but especially down in three. Chris. And we see Jamie McMurray coming in. Talked about the car being a little bit tight over the tunnel turn. So a small adjustment here. Also going to pull some tape on the grill of that car. And Kyle Busch working with interim crew chief Ben Bayshore. Four tires stopped there saying he's just a little bit loose, but the car was good. You see the 48 on pit road as well. Now Kurt Busch also pitted, so that gave the lead to Kyle Larson. Ahead of Eric Jones, then Austin Dillon, Daniel Suarez, Casey Kane. Ryan Blaney's in, Jamie. Well, the window open. They pitted the first to do so on lap 13 to bright sides only, and he had a vibration, so a loose wheel for Blaney. He had to come back in. 42 liter is on pit road, Chris. And Kyle Larson pretty happy with his race car coming into this race, but starting off, he said, firing off that car a bit too tight as the air pressures do come up in the 42. He said, now the car's just too loose. Ryan Newman speeding in section seven of pit road. Matt. Mike Austin Dillon in the car on the tight side. Four tire change, no chassis adjustments for Dillon. He's away. Mike, I just saw in some of those pit stops, uh, incredible amounts of brake dust flying off of those front tires when the uh, tire changer gets that air wrench in there. Using a lot of brake. I think brake temps and the, the amount of tip in the wheel hub, everything is going to be so critical today and be very difficult to manage. What we saw in the telemetry, turn one, you've got to take 40 miles an hour of speed out of that car to get through the corner. Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the radio complaining of a soft brake pedal. Now, from what I understand, up. a lot of these teams have really beefed up their brakes for this race, but that doesn't mean they're going to open them up and let air flow through. Chris? Yeah, we see Chase Elliott coming to pit lane, talking with Alan Gustafson. He said, we just missed it in qualifying, but we got a good car today. He said he is struggling in traffic, though. Jamie. And Daniel Suarez making his first cup start here. You see the wrench in the windshield. They're going to make a wedge adjustment. Air pressure has already been done. A four-tire stop for the 19. It's a good one. Yeah, Jeff, the, the brake ducts, these straightaways, Mike, are so long, and you want to make as much time down the straightaway as you can. You're going to take that grill up, those brake ducts up, as much as you feasibly can. Sometimes you overdo it. Yeah, because aerodynamics are so important to the speed of your race car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is coming in. Shifting it way down, using engine compression to slow it. Yeah, when he says he has a soft pedal, that means he has to pump that brake pedal to get the brakes that he really wants to come to pit road. Yeah, it means they're hot. It's yeah. So they're, I mean, he can maybe nurse them a little bit here and get that pedal back. Jamie? And the 88, they completely changed the setup on this car. Just Junior was not happy, lacking speed. And this is a great racetrack for him. So Greg Ives said they went to the drawing board last night, came together, and now he's complaining about the brakes. As you guys noted, a four-tire stop here for the 88. See if they can help that car out. You heard him say they were going to pull some tape, too, to get some air to those brakes. Eric Jones is your leader from Trevor Bain and Danica Patrick. They have not made pit stops. Now, during practice, Bubba Wallace was trying to get his tack readings right for pit road, and apparently they had an issue still because he's been nabbed for speeding in multiple sections. Too fast entering. Mike, I just think there are so many elements that he has never had to experience. Now, speeding on pit road, you do that in, you know, with its affinity or cup, but you got a different dashboard. You got a you got the digital dash where he's not accustomed. So many things he's not accustomed to looking at and using may have just gotten him right there. And the, the cup teams push things to the limit everywhere on every square inch of this racetrack. And I, I got to believe they just got to open up that box a little bit more for him. Mark Truex Jr. on pit road. And we're told the reason that Ryan Blaney came back to pit road was they had a loose right front and a vibration there. That's why he stopped again. So seven of the top ten have yet to make their stop. Leader Eric Jones, Danica Patrick, Trevor Bain, Ricky Stenhouse, Ty Dillon, Chris Buescher, and David Reagan. Still yet to make their first appearance on pit road. 22 laps complete. Jones the leader by 14 seconds over Danica Patrick.
25 laps complete in Pocono. Bill Elliott swept both Pocono races in 1985. That's our first Ford Performance Track back today. Patty Pearson, Walter Yarborough combined to win five of the first six races. Now, Bubba Wallace having trouble coming in for his stop in section one, two, four, and seven, and then on his pass through penalty, having speeding in sections two and four, those short sections, now he had to do a stop and go. And we were riding along inside the car. You could see green lights that are on that digital dash. That's new to Bubba Wallace. He does not have that over in the Xfinity series. So that's something that he's gonna have to get used to. You hear the drivers talk about how sensitive it is all the time. And he's got a little damage on the left rear also with the, on that quarter panel he's gonna have to deal with. But this is just something he's gonna have to just calm down, take a breath, and just start to put those laps in. Jamie? during practice sessions, but there's nothing like true race conditions. And when he came down for his first ever stop in a cup car, he was looking for the number six pit board sign. That's his number in the Xfinity series. They reminded him it's 43-43. So that's a note to, this, to all of them. They need to remind their driver, this is new, he's in the 43, and watch your speeding on pit road. And, and Mike, you might say, how could that happen? We're creatures of habit. Yes. Here's your leader. Another rookie, Eric Jones. Now he has not stopped, nor has Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who started 39th, nor has David Reagan or Cole Witt or Reed Sorensen, Cody Ware. Everybody else has made a pit stop. All right, why would Chris Gale, the crew chief for Eric Jones, continue to run? Because he can actually go probably another eight to 10 laps, but he has over a 12-second lead. I think what Chris is thinking is if we do get a caution before I pit, we've probably run far enough that everyone else would follow them on the pit road to get four fresh tires. I just think that's what makes stage racing in this track particularly so much fun. You can pit, not lose a lap. You can you can apply a, a dozen different strategies here today and get to get get a good result. Yeah, teams have always looked at this racetrack and run the strategy similar to a road course like we'll see in a couple weeks at Sonoma. Then you throw stages in there and that just opens up even more options. So we're racing to the 50 lap mark. The stage lengths here are 50, 50, and 60 laps to finish this off at 400 miles. Here's Kevin Harvick, currently fifth. Now he made a pit stop at lap 16. Matt. Hey, Mike, earlier you saw the debris that was on the nose of Harvick's Ford. A, a few moments ago, Harvick told the team that the brakes are the worst that they've actually been all weekend. Rodney Childers and Timmy Fidua told him to keep an eye on the temperature gauge. Fidua looking to see if there's any debris on the nose that might be causing that. Tim Fidua is his spotter up on the roof above our position at start finish. Well, and this is the longest they've run all weekend long. We've been surprised that they've not run more than about eight laps in a row in practice because we had anticipated brakes really being an issue. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. It's a lot hotter, it's slicker, and those, they're, they're needing to use those brakes even more on these longer runs. And, and Jeff, I think he's trying to help himself a bit because we see him shift over the tunnel turn, which a lot of guys don't. So not only is he shifting out up into third gear as he goes off into turn one here, that helps the brakes a little bit, slows the car, but he's also doing it over the tunnel and getting into turn three. So he's doing a lot of shifting around this racetrack right now. These drivers might not have a choice but to do go into conservation mode and save some fuel because they might have to just lift really early to not use those brakes. You see now there's there. two, two schools of thought. What Harvick is doing is shifting to help slow the car entering the turn. There are some drivers who won't make that downshift till they're ready to accelerate up off the turn. Yeah, I think it's a comfort thing. Uh, and, and, and then whatever rhythm you get into, you can find speed with it. But one thing I've, I've typically watched out of Kevin Harvick is he'll shift downshift really late into the corner right as he's picking up the throttle. Now this week I've seen him downshifting much earlier and it's really more of a comfort. Let's walk right along here. So that's right before he gets to the center of the corner. That's just to help slow the car down, Mike. I mean, you catch third gear getting into the corner, that slows you down a little bit. A little less break. Eric Jones has left 10 more laps today than is in his entire cup career to date.
beautiful place, the Poconos. And here in the middle of the Pocono Mountains sits this tri-cornered racetrack. There weren't enough mountains in the Poconos, so we brought our own for Donnie Russell, who is uh, way high atop that lift, to give you a look at the mouth of the tunnel turn as the cars come down the long pond straightaway. Here's what Donnie sees and what you see when we put that camera on the air. That is a brave man. You know what else I see? I see that wind whooping around over there, too. Sure is. That monitor was going crazy. It's the tunnel looking at turn one and picking up, uh, looking for our leader, Eric Jones, six seconds ahead I tell you of what, Kyle he, Busch now. He might want to get to pit road pretty soon, though, because Kyle Busch has gained about two seconds a lap on him. Donnie or Eric? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Here he comes. He's listening to you, DW. Oh boy. So he's been out there 34 laps, and he's led 17 of them, tying Kyle Busch for the most laps led today. Prior to today, he had only led three laps in his first year of Monster Energy Series competition. Jamie? Well, you had a vibration early on in this run, but it seemed to have gone away, so they think it was just brake shake. The car has been good all weekend. They really felt like they had a solid top five car, so he's proving that so far. They brought him in, uh, saying he's getting tight, and it gets worse as he runs. So a four-tire stop here. They'll free him up just a bit. Wipe the grill, and away he goes. Like it always makes sense. Car gets a little tight. Burns off fuel. Got about 20, uh, 20 gallon of fuel in the back of that thing. As that burns off, you gain nose weight, tires wear, brake heat. That gets your car tightened up. Now he'll be able to stay on the lead lap as we look at sixth place. Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson. The, the trend continues for Jimmy Johnson. Doesn't qualify very good. Sometimes he even goes to the back of the pack uh, and starts from the tail because of some issues maybe that they've had and then drives to the front. But you know what's interesting is Jimmy Johnson has no stage points, but he has the second most points because he has three wins. Truex has 18, Jimmy has 15, so they're the two top point getters. So stage racing is new this year in the uh, two intermediate stages in the race, 50 laps, 50 laps, a final stage of 60. The top 10 drivers receive points, and the winner of each stage gets a playoff point that'll be big come the end of the season. So Kyle Busch back out front where he started the day, leading the first 17 laps. And the most recent two pulling up on Jeffrey Earnhardt. Kevin Harvick now the second place car. Pitted one lap before Kyle Busch on lap 16. And when we get towards the end of the race, the fuel mileage isn't going to be as good. Just so you know. Therefore. Now Harvick was eighth prior to pit stops. He is now seventh. Brad Keselowski, we talked to at the start of the day, eight seconds back of the leader. Kurt Busch and Kyle Larson, 10 seconds back, fighting for fourth. Kurt, last year's winner here. Go back another four seconds, you'll find Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth. That's 14 out of the lead. Chase Elliott, about a half second behind Kenseth. Yeah, Jimmy eight. pulled him right along with them up through there. Chris? You see Chase Elliott there, good run up, big mover in the race so far, but in running so hard, he is starting to say that I'm having some brake issues, the brakes fading in that car. And talking to crew chiefs this morning, a lot of them saying they're running the brake package that they ran at Richmond, but they also say you've got to be a driver that's going to take care of your brakes all day if you want to get to the end. Jamie McMurray, also another driver now complaining about his brakes. And, and big brakes, yeah, they'll stop better, but guess what big brakes also do? Create more heat. So you got to manage those brakes. You got to be able to not use them, overuse them and get them hot. 12 laps to go in this stage. Joey Logano is now 10th, but he stopped on lap five. He's going to need another stop before this stage concludes 12 laps from now. Let's go double wide here.
Kyle Busch race leader Kevin Harvick four seconds back. Nine laps to go in stage one. Let's get our AARP keys to the drive. We've seen speeds approaching 210 miles per hour this weekend into turn one. Mid-corner speeds nearly 50 miles per hour slower than that. So great performance and making sure they don't fail has been a big focus for today. Restarts are crazy here. Four or five wide as these drivers get down into turn one trying to gain positions. But while your mindset is to attack, there is a part of the brain reminding you to not overdrive that entry and minimize mistakes. It's possible to make a pit stop without losing a lap, so we may see teams pitting prior to the end of a stage to be in better position later in the race. Will your strategy be to earn more points at the end of a stage or at the end of the race? Because those two may not align, and the driver and the crew chief have to be on the same page to make that strategy work. Thanks, Jeff. You saw Joey Logano make that second pit stop that we said he would have to make before the end of this stage as we watch a race for 15th between the Toyotas of Truex and Hamlin. Obviously, obviously 78 didn't lose much water. He's running pretty good. Here's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Still talking about brakes. Which ones are hot? I'm just trying to, I gave you cooling. If they didn't get any better, I'm going to get you right rear cooling as well. Yeah, let's use our Ford Performance Cutaway car and let's look at the front brakes. I mean, they are mammoth. This is what you would run in Sonoma in a couple of weeks or the short track. Now, the concern is temperature because when you look at the rotors, crew chiefs were telling me we have to make sure that they're not over 12 to 13 degrees Fahrenheit. When you look at the actual caliper itself, this right here, you have to make sure it's not over 500 degrees because it will start to melt the O-rings, but then the pads that are inside those calipers right there, you have to make sure they're not over 1,800 degrees because if they do, it'll start to boil the fluid. And Jeff, you and I were talking earlier this morning, the other concern, all that heat going in into the hub area. Yeah, and those rotors, they can dissipate the heat out of the rotors. Very difficult to get that heat out of those hubs. This battle, talking about brakes, this is a battle that's been going on. Chase Elliott's desperate to get by Matt Kenseth and goes back to what Larry was talking about, brake temperatures. He's been complaining, you can see, comes out to try to get some clean air into those air ducts to cool those brakes. He's been battling with a soft pedal and some brake issues. He wants to get by Matt Kenseth here in a hurry. Yeah, I know, by the way, with the brakes and everything, we're going to throw a wheel right over the top of them and cover them up. So it's hard to get some air in there to keep them cool. Seventh place battle. Full throttle. Hard on the brake. Down to 153 miles an hour mid corner. Watch how fast you go across this short shoot, Mike. I mean, you're talking 185 miles an hour, and that's called the short shoot. Chase Dillon has an excellent race car. Look at him get right to the rear bumper of the 20. This might be his opportunity. Yeah, he gets to the left rear. He might be able to complete this pass, should be able to complete it now down in turn one and cool those brakes. And you're right, Darrell. He had to woe it down 50 miles an hour in the short shoot to get through turn three. Yeah, and you just saw what he did there, Mike. It's, he goes way wide to get away from the 20 car to get any side draft that the 20 car might create. So he wants to break that draft, go way wide down low next to the wall, and then swing back in front of the 20 car and complete the pass. Five to go in stage one. Kyle Busch has led 28 laps. Eric Jones, 17. Harvick's coming. He's within three seconds of Kyle Busch now. It was four about three laps ago. And then you know what, Mike? It makes sense for him to be good at the end of one of these runs because you think he's shifted a little bit more than everybody else. So I think he's got a little bit more speed uh, because, of, uh, because of that. Yeah, I, I can't wait to follow up and see if we can't get a little bit more understanding of the comments that Kevin Harvick made. At the end of this race, this is what he said, at the end of this race, our fuel mileage is not going to be as good as we anticipate. And I wonder if that's a signal back to Rodney or the, and the team about shifting in order to find good speed at the end of this race. He's going to have to burn more fuel by shifting more. Well, one thing that will change is Martin Truex who has finished in the top four in stage one of the last nine races. Only way that can happen here is if five cars ahead of him pit in the next four laps. And they can't pit with two to go in the stage. Next couple, next couple laps, we'll see if anybody's going to use a little 
contrarian strategy here. We thought Pocono might be one track where a car near the front could make it onto pit road before the leader crosses the line with two to go and make that stop before the end of the stage. We're about to find out. You know, guys, if we had not went caution free, I would like to think here in the next lap someone would come. But I don't think the top 10 wants to give up stage points. And look, the 11th place driver, Clint Boyer, is 26 seconds behind the leader. You can't do it and not go a lap down. So I don't know if I see that happening. Yeah, I agree with you, Larry. I can't, you're kind of in locked into what you got, what you got. Jimmy Johnson got fifth place right there from Kurt Busch. He might get a stage point today. <laughs> <laughs> might get a few of them. <laughs> That means there's two laps to go in stage one. And then that just like Jimmy though, you know, oh, well, he doesn't have any stage points. Well, I might get a few today just for the heck of it. No, he focuses on the big stage points. He gets those, the win. <laughs> he gets those five. What I want to know is if he, when he went, when, not if, when he wins race number 84, is he going to have to cut that helmet in half, half for <laughs> you and half for Bobby Allison? <laughs> oh, that's going to be the question of the day. I wouldn't ask Bobby Allison about that. <laughs> I can tell you. I, I don't know. I, I told Harvick, him if he uh, wins, I'll be down there. Harvick's still coming. 2.2 seconds. He's not going to catch Kyle Busch before he's shown he's got the speed. We see this so much out of this four team of Kevin Harvick. They, they are pretty good on that opening run, but when they can get on pit road, put four fresh tires on, make some adjustments, that car comes to life. Well, it's going to have to if it's going to catch the guy leading right now because he's got to, he's got a pretty fast race car. Well, last week in Dover, Kyle Busch started from the pole, and after just 18 laps, they made a pit stop. The left rear wheel came off, and he lost his crew chief, tire changer, and tire carrier for four races, suspended because of losing that wheel. The team says they will not appeal. So now, Kyle Busch picking up right where he left off on the final lap of stage one. Here's Austin Dillon in 10th place trying to pick up the final stage point and here's a race for sixth with Chase Elliott trying to get past Kurt Busch and does. And you see him again go real low in the corner get away from that other car that breaks the draft and makes you able to complete the pass. I really believe Chase Elliott I, I saw this in practice I think he has one of the fastest race cars now we're going to end this stage. Kyle Busch wins stage one it's his fourth stage victory of the season. All of them coming in stage one. Kevin Harvick second, Kozlowski third, Larson fourth, Johnson fifth. Elliott Bush for sixth and seventh. Kenseth, McMurray, Dillon. Should be the top ten. And they will receive stage points with Kyle Busch. Only the second time these years, stage one has gone caution free.
A monster of a stage win for Kyle Busch. From the pole, leading 34. Now 35 laps, including these last two under the caution flag. Ben Bayshore up on the pit box. Adam Stevens under suspension, which means he can be at Pocono, but he can't be in any area that would that require his NASCAR hard card for admission and cannot be on the team radio. So they'll come to pit road at the end of stage one. We expect everybody but Joey Logano, perhaps, to come to pit road. Here's our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. See how sharp that turn one is. And let's check up on the Coca-Cola racing family. See how those drivers are faring. Austin Dillon picked up a stage point. Suarez Hamlin, everybody on the lead lap, including Logano, who has pitted twice. First at lap five, and then at lap 41. Clint Boyer has a word about some of the adjustments available to the driver from the cockpit. Track bars blinking red means you're getting pretty close to maxed out, but you can only go up to 0. 0.7. Yeah, that's what it is. Huh. Okay, so far, learn something new every day. You know, one of the reasons they don't want to get to max, you can burn out the motor on that adjuster, and, and then you don't have any adjustment. Yeah, it sounds like he must be tight because he's going up with the track bar. Okay. Pit road's open, Matt. Mike, on the first run, Kevin Harvick said the car was just way too tight, especially in turn three. Telling Rodney Childers the car still on the tight side needs to be a little bit more free as he finished second in stage one. Meanwhile, the deuce of Brad Keselowski, remember he pitted back on lap 12, took rights in an air pressure change to try to improve the balance in one and three. Still needs more grip, Chris. Kyle Larson pretty happy with his race car, saying he's like, got a lot more grip on this run. His only concern, a little bit tight off turn three. Four tires, no adjustments. Jamie. Rear changer Adam Hartman and Amor Parrish is the rear carrier filling in for the next four races for Kyle Busch. His regulars are suspended. It was a four-tire stop for Kyle Busch, who was getting tight on exit. Two-tire change for Eric Jones puts him out front. Ahead of Kyle Busch and... Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson. We say we dial up our stage one winner. Hey, Kyle, this is Jeff up in the FS1 booth. You got me? Yes, sir. How's it going? Well, it's going pretty good. Not as good as it's going for you. I mean, uh, missing a couple of your normal pit crew members. No Adam Stevens. Ben Basher is certainly doing a great job. No problem. Go and win stage one. Tell us a little bit about the conditions. We're hearing a lot about brake temps and different things. What kind of challenges are you being faced with? Uh, it's definitely way hotter today than it has been the last couple of days. So we're seeing a bigger spike in fall off and lap time being slower. So, um, you know, I'm not so sure everybody kind of expected that. So uh, our m and camera has been really good, though. You know, uh, being out front, being able to take the take opportunity of our winning the poll is a good thing so far. So hopefully we can just keep it up here. Yeah, keep it up. Thanks for talking to us. Good luck. Thank you. I can't believe how cool this is. What other major sport? allows you to talk to the athletes right in the heat of competition and get great answers like that? Nowhere. Nah.
attitude and effort. Keep both those up today. We're going to overcome anything. We're going to the rear. We're going to charge back up to the front. Have some fun out there, Bubba. Appreciate you helping out. Coming to you guys. Coming to you. Flat tire. Pretty bad. Right here. up tight. I think I got something on my grill. I am running out of brakes. Brake pedal solid to the floor. Ready to restart for stage two. Ricky Stenhouse stayed on the racetrack. We'll explain in a moment. First to Chris Neville at our eBay Motors pit box. Mike, we've been talking a lot about strategy this weekend, and teams do a lot of homework. Each week they get a stat pack, which tells them about cautions during the race, and also what the previous race winner, the strategy that they use to get that win. They're also using proprietary software during the race, where they can input their pace, how much fuel they're burning, when they're hitting pit, rain, pit road, and also if the driver is shifting or using a lot of brake. That will tell them if their range is going to change. But most of these crew chiefs will also tell you that when it comes down to making that winning call, a lot of times that just comes from your gut. Thanks, Chris. Ricky Stenhouse with 24 laps on his tires. Larry, why would he not pit? Well, what they did, they pitted late. They pitted at lap 31. He realistically can go to lap 69, but I think Brian Patty, when they get to their window about lap 62, I think you'll see that 17 on pit road. Uh -huh. Joey Logano and four others took the wave around to get back on the lead lap. Here they come to the Geico restart zone to complete lap 56. Boy, Ricky Stenhouse Boy, Jr. Really oh, really don't go in there, turn didn't he, buddy? I thought Eric Jones had him cleared, but Ooh, he uh, gets a little loose off of the first turn. Jones is going to come back. I think they're going to get three wide down the back, but 18 can get up to the 77. Can't quite get there. Watch Stenhouse drive in deep again. Ooh, Harvick pushed wow, way yeah. up, entering Doesn't the corner. Doesn't pay a lot of Harvick dividends. Went right out of our picture. Yeah. Doesn't pay much dividend to do it there. And Harvick losing a bunch of positions as he lost the momentum. Pushing going way up the racetrack, entering turn two. Yeah, once you get out of the gas, you lose that momentum. It that little short, you don't have much time yeah. to get it back. Well, we saw how good. We saw just how good Kevin Harvick was on that last run towards the end of that run. We're hearing a lot of drivers up. Oh, Junior having an issue. Oh, did he miss a gear again, or did it get stuck? Down quite yet. Hang on. Couple more. Clear by three to the 38, two back, one back, you're clear low. Come on down, come on down. Yeah, I, think I don't know what broke. it is about the shift of the sweep, but it's not natural to me. Now this is a new transmission. They had to change engine and transmission after the incident in practice we showed you earlier. Looks like Clint Boyer may have been in the wall. No, he's got trouble. You see smoke coming out of the car. He's going to have to get to pit road. Right. That'll cut the tire. Road. That right rear might be cut already. Trouble for Boyer, two weeks in a row. Yeah, he gets up oh. high here, just uh, no air on the nose. And let's listen to Dale Earnhardt Jr. diagnose his problem. Sounds like a replay. Very, very similar. Sounded what like we... what he did in practice on Friday. Jamie? And that's exactly right. And Junior just said on the radio, I don't know what it is. I just keep going to second gear. So he means to grab fourth. He goes to second. And I believe now his day is done bringing it in. And he had just said he liked the way that 88 car was driving, but he had no confidence in the brakes. And of course, now the transmission is broken. So, Larry, I'm with Junior taking his gloves off. I'm pretty sure he's done, right? That's a mechanical that you cannot change. Well, if it's just the transmission, yes, they could change the transmission, but something tells me it's going to be just like Friday. It's going to be engine related. Yeah, you got to start yeah. at the radiator and work back. Friday, here going for the lead, Kyle Bush on Eric Jones and takes it, bringing Kyle Larson along for second place. Yeah. Remember, Jones took just two tires. Kyle Busch and Larson have four. But for Junior, when he shipped, when he hit second gear, we call that the money shift. And on Friday when it happened, the engine went to 12,600 RPM. The service ceiling on that engine is 9,500. Yeah, yeah, money shift because it costs you a lot of money. You bet. <laughs> if you listen to that, it sounded exactly like what to happen to him on Friday.
Dale Jr. to the garage. Kyle Busch, the new leader, with Kyle Larson. And, over and, Eric Jones. You know, to, to kind of go back to what Dale Jr. was saying, that's not normal that that would go into second gear that easily. I mean, he's been doing this a long time. That's that's not just a mistake. There's something going on where that motion is not going from third to fourth gear like it should be. Yeah, you I saw mean, the you saw the temperatures there, and Matt, it is way hotter today than it's been either Friday or Saturday here. Mike, no question, Jimmy Johnson, the fittest driver in the garage. Remember back to Texas when he survived that huge heat issue and still went to victory lane with his drink system failed. Johnson having some more heat-related issues. In fact, on the stop, Ron Malik, the car chief, after the stop was completed, went around to the right side and opened up one of the Nacaducks to try to get more air inside the car. Where are you at? Do you really need us to try to work on this thing? I mean, temperature-wise. Oh, uh, it's, yeah, it's hot. I'm, I'm hot. I don't know if there's an easy fix. If there isn't, then I'll just deal with it. Well, it's not going to be fast. It's definitely going to slow us down a little bit, but we'll try to break open that right side Nacaduck. You gotta, you gotta love Chad Knauss. I mean, he's such a fierce competitor, but so is his driver. He's very physically fit, and one of the reasons he's become so physically fit is to help the performance of that race car. And I'm not just talking about, you know, manhandling the race car. It allows them to close up some of the driver cooling to make the car go faster. But on a day like today, they're, they're gonna have to keep him cool. Yeah, he wears a vest to keep himself cool. Short day for Dale Earnhardt Jr. as he climbs out of the 88. Kyle Busch leads Kyle Larson by seven tenths of a second. Austin Dillon just made a pit stop. Let's take a look at how Joey Meyer, Brad Keselowski's spotter, helped him worry less with Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. Five, four, three, two, one. Green, 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 green. Good out back. Good out back. Still inside. 42 is going to suck up to the 18. Still inside tight. Still two wide. Still two wide left. Nobody behind you. Two wide to your left, nobody in behind. Still inside. 1842 to our left. Worrying less. Now those spotters, from their spot on the stand here above us, 
out to turn number two. That's over 3,000 feet. So that's a long look, 3,100 feet from their spot to the tunnel turn. Mike, that's good information, though, from that spotter. You know exactly where everybody is, and you know what kind of move you can make. So Larry's window of opportunity is open. Yeah, we're there. We're 35 laps to go in this stage. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in that 17, he had to pit. He was losing a lot of ground. Here comes Brad Keselowski now in that two car. He was one of the drivers that pitted early in stage one. Matt. And Larry Mack, remember, they were one of the first cars, like he said, pitted, but they also took right side tires on that stop back on lap 12. This stop, the game plan, unless they call an audible, is to go for four tires. Yes, indeed, they're going for four. Meanwhile, the 41 of Kurt Busch on pit road, they're going to go four tires as well. Down to the 22 in Jamie. And Joey Logano making his way down, his teammate on pit road as well. They count him down into the box. No grip at all is what a lot of these guys are saying, including Joey Logano. They'll work on the adjustment on the car. You see that wedge in the right rear window there. And a four-tire stop for the 22. Kevin Harvick is in. 22 goes down a lap with that spot uh, stop. Here's Matt. Harvick needs to be a little more freer on this run. Clean tear off off the front. You can see them cleaning the grill. He had had some debris on the grill. He tried using the 77 of Jones to clean that off. Solid stop. He's away. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. out of the race. He's with Chris Neville. Well, Mike, in all the years that Dale Jr. has been running at Pocono, this is only his second DNF. And, Dale, I know it's been a very frustrating weekend. Has the team done anything different with the transmission this weekend? No, they yeah, haven't. I just, something in my motion is, I mean, there really isn't anything different. The shifter's not different. The handle's not different. The location, everything's the same. I don't know whether it's something about my motion. It's not, uh, it's, you know, going in the wrong gear. I can't, uh, I wish I could blame it on something else because this is awful. Feels awful. Um, the car was fast. We drove up in the top 15 there. We went in great lap times. Really, really happy with the car. Wasn't really running that hard, backing up the corners big time and just cruising uh, forward, really happy. It's just uh, my fault. I don't know what else to, uh, I wish I could say that the shifter's different and, and something's uh, something's out of line. That's there, you know, not not something I've done. I was doing last year as far as where we're where we had the shifter mounted for Pocono. This really concerns me coming back here and the road courses, you know. But we haven't had any problems all year long. But at places where we do a lot of shifting, I don't know what what's going on. What I got to do or why this is really happening out of nowhere so I don't know what I don't know we don't really have an answer to it other than me just having to pay more attention but I mean I've been doing this all my life and this isn't this isn't a common issue that it has been this weekend thanks Dale two transmissions for Dale Jr. this weekend now the top 13 drivers have not made pit stops in the column on the right side of your screen you can see who is in at any time during these green flag stops so the top 13 from Kyle Busch down to Ty Dillon have not made this stop. They're going to go deeper into this stage, it appears, before coming to pit road. Chase Elliott will pit. Chris. And you see Chase Elliott working his way down pit lane there. He said the car is pretty good from the changes that they made early on. However, he did say that uh, he's really trying to manage the brakes in that car. And his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, is saying, just take care of him. Take care of him the best you can. Roll out of the throttle, getting into turn one. Jimmy Johnson in and out uh, after complaints about the heat, Matt. Mike, he lost a lot of track position when they opened up that Nacaduck. Restarted all the way back in 18th, made a little bit of headway, but Johnson complaining the car extremely on the tight side. Track bar adjuster didn't help. Finally hit pit road and made a significant swing at it to try to free up that 48. 
Bachman tells me this track may be changing quite a bit. We've seen some really high track temperatures, not just ambient temperature that Jimmy Johnson deal with. I think that track temperature is also laying a lot of rubber and changing the balance of these race cars. Well, and, and the, the ambient temperature drives the brake temp. It drives all your temps up. Engine, brakes, tires, a whole nine yards. And what else is going to drive Jimmy Johnson? Kyle Busch showing up in his rearview mirror. He's Johnson's right in danger him. of going a lap down. He is, Mike. I just noticed that right behind him as he came out of the pits. Watch Johnson coming out of his pit stall after that stop. Kind of stumbled. Almost a little stalled bit. it. Yeah, I, stumbled. I believe he realized that it, the tires grabbed and it was dropped the RPMs. He had to push the clutch back in and then get going again. I think you got a pretty high first gear uh, in these cars, if, yeah. and it makes them hard to take off uh, from a dead stop. Now he's caught Ryan Newman, who's 21st. Behind him is his teammate Casey Kane, and those three are the last cars on the lead lap. Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse, who is the first car one lap down, right in the tire tracks of Kyle Busch. Frustrating day ends for Dale Earnhardt Jr. One hundred sixty laps, four hundred miles in eastern Pennsylvania today, and Kyle Busch, who won stage one, has been out front for stage number two, leading Eric Jones by eight seconds. Here's a look at your pole sitter and leader without his crew chief and two of his over-the-wall crew members due to the suspension from last week's lost wheel. Kyle Busch picking up from the pole and leading most of the laps. The only other driver with significant laps led is rookie Eric Jones, who's led 20 laps and sits in second place. Got the third place runner here, Martin Trex Jr. He won here in June of uh, 2015. Uh, we can either do that or we can just let 
with the run. We're just trying to decide. Good four, bud. He's 11.3 seconds back and headed for pit road. So Larry essentially uh, Truex splitting this stage in half. That's exactly what they're doing Mike because we went back racing at lap 56 so we're lap 77. You know we've got what 23 laps to go to the end of the stage. That's exactly what they're doing. Jamie. It's been an interesting weekend for the 78. They had to change out a power steering pump and they change out the steering box and then the engine. So he's fought his way back from the back just too tight on the exit. That's been the complaint for tire steering and air pressure adjustment. Meanwhile, on the right hand side in the top five, Ryan Blaney, he has had radio issues. The team cannot hear him. He can hear them though. On the last stop, they gave him a radio. That didn't help matters. So they told him to blow into the microphone. Maybe it's wet. That didn't help. So they just said, tap the roof if you're loose. Tap the door if you're tight. You tap the roof. They desperately don't want to take the time to swap out helmets at this time. Boy, that's old school that right is there. old school that's right David there, brother. David Pearson old school. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Daniel Suarez, nice run for the rookie in fifth, 20 seconds back. And here's the greatest story of qualifying. Michael McDowell racing for the fire department and New York Foundation with Levine Brothers Racing. Made the final round of qualifying, and he's running the top 15 all day. Yeah, great run by that 95 team. And then Danica, you know, she had a great finish last week in Dover, and uh, she has a 15th place finish here. I think it was uh, back in August of 15. Danica in seventh, 24 seconds back. Trying for a second straight top 10. Paul Menard. Eighth place for Richard Childress Racing. 27 seconds out. And you. And once you get behind Paul Menard, you start to get into the cars and drivers that came down pit road and, and have made their stop in this stage and carrying a lot of speed right now. About an eight tenths gap uh, in speed per lap between those that took tires just like Kevin Harvick in 10th place versus our leader Kyle Busch. So the first eight cars back to Menard plus Ty Dillon in 16th are the lead lap cars that have not made a pit stop here in stage two.
18 laps to go in stage two at Pocono. The first seven cars and Paul Menard in ninth have not pitted. They last pitted at lap 73. Larry, we've got 17 to go in stage two. What do you think their strategy is? Yeah, I think I figured it out. Eric Jones and Chris Gale, they have figured out this strategy will work. I think that Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, all those drivers have not pitted. They're going to go to about lap 88 or 90, 10 or 12 to go in this stage. Then they'll pit, and what that will allow them to do is they're going to stay out at the end of stage two, and then the minute the window opens with 38 to go in this race, they come and get four more tires. So what they're trying to do is reduce their number of pit stops. Wow. Well, now, how about strategy for Martin Truex, who decided to split this stage by stopping halfway through? Yeah, all those guys pitted when the window opened. We split the run, so it should work out good here because we have clean track a lot more than they did after they pitted. Set four, bud. Where are we at? Keep me updated on what I got to do. Yeah, set four. There's still bunches that are going to stretch it and then probably stay out of the stage, so we just got to uh, just make up as many spots as we can. Now, Mike, let me expand on that. Those drivers, when they pit with 10 or 12 to go, they may not necessarily stay out at the end of stage two, but they may do exactly what Eric Jones did and come and get just rights. It's a great and, option to have. And Mike, that's something I heard in Truex's voice. Uh, that was a guy that was laboring. And it's hot today, and we do a lot of shifting. We do a lot of braking. This is not a physically demanding track, but that heat takes, out, takes that to another level. When it's hot outside like this, the driver really pays for it. Now, one, one of the hardest, hottest races I've ever dealt with was right here at Pocono. So I think it's more physical than you think because of the downshifting and the heavy braking. As we go on board, Bubba Wallace making a pit stop, four tires. Great view out the windshield. And watching him in action. Now, but, that is his first stop in this stage. So I. I just go back to a time when I got really dehydrated at this, this track, and boy, did I pay the price afterwards. Heavy cramping. Well, think about Johnson at Bristol. Remember, his, he wears a vest, a cooling vest, and uh, he said that thing works to perfection. But remember, when he got out of the car at Bristol, he had to go to the infield care center and uh, get some fluids pumped in him because he was dehydrated. And he's in the shape. He's in probably the best shape anybody in the field. Third place here. I was wondering if uh, Denny Hamlin had scraped the wall. Don't see any real damage on the right side of his uh, number 11 Toyota. There was already a, a mark on the wall there as he came off the tunnel turn. Well, he's flirting with it. If he, didn't, <laughs> if he didn't hit it, he was flirting with it. That wall protrudes out right there, Mike. It's got a little in protrusion that comes out there just a little wee bit, which makes it look mighty close sometimes. It's an Audi. It's, it, it is. <laughs> Look at Hamlin's record. Four wins here before they repaved this at the end of 2011. And he has somewhat struggled here since the repave. Talk to Ricky Stenhouse this morning. He raced Arca here on the old surface and loved it. Has not been happy with this track since the repave. I think Denny hit it on the head, though, when he uh, was at the pre-race show. He wasn't shifting then, and, and now they shift. And so that's made a difference in how he approaches the track. Matt? Those three factors sure have impacted his success recently here at Pocono. In fact, he told me before the repave, it was like a completely different atmosphere coming here. He has struggled of late this weekend, though. He swapped over overnight to the 18 of Kyle Busch's setup to try to improve the balance of this race car. No changes in the last stop. They're looking to go to around lap 92 when they hit pit road next. Ryan Blaney gives up fourth place to come to pit road. Lap 87. Had a nice run today, Mike. Been real solid. A top five just about all day. And uh, great recovery good. from that issue they had early in this race. Yes, Danica sir. Patrick on pit road. Jamie. And the team joked with me about Ryan. They said, well, it's not the worst thing if you can't hear your driver complaining the whole time. <laughs> you see, they're trying again, not giving up. They just handed him another radio to see if that'll help do the trick. Remember, they cannot hear him. He hears them. They're going to adjust that car right there. He was loose, and it's a four-tire stop. Now, he should be able to get back out and not lose a lap. Not so for Patrick. She was too far back in the order. She will go down a lap to Kyle Busch who has not yet made that pit stop. We've only had one caution flag, and that was for the stage end as Eric Jones comes to pit road, giving up second place. Since this became a 400-mile race, 
we've only gone 67 laps into it before the first caution before today. Jamie. Something the team's been trying to work with Eric on is get a little bit more up on the wheel when you get in and out of your box. He's a little timid and a little slow at times, so he's been working on that, saying the balance is really good on the car, but he just had those old tires he really couldn't keep up. A four-tire stop for the 77. Mike, I think a lot of this, we beat in these young drivers' heads, don't beat yourself. And sometimes I think they take the real conservative approach. I think that's probably what Eric does, try not to beat themselves by speeding on pit road or making a mistake in the pits. Well, and he's a very consistent driver. He does the same thing on the racetrack. He hits his marks. He doesn't make many mistakes. We've seen him lose control of the car during practice, but rarely in the race do we see him make mistakes. And I think that's because that's the approach he takes. Michael McDowell is one of five drivers who have not yet made a pit stop in this stage. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Daniel Suarez, one, two, three. McDowell in fifth, trying to fend off Chase Elliott and Paul Menard. None of them have made a stop. We're told to expect the race leader this time. I think Todd Parrott, what they're doing with this little 95 car, pretty impressive, guys. Very. Here comes our leader. Kyle Busch had a 21 second lead when he came to pit road. Long way down there to stall number one. And that will leave just Hamlin, Suarez, McDowell, and Menard, who have not made a stop in this stage. Hamlin's at the line now. Now he's going to give up the lead here because while he, Jamie. Ben Bayshore with the call. That's his race engineer, is the crew chief. You see the wedge adjustment there. Kyle saying tight center exit just a bit, but he wants help rotating the center off. An air pressure adjustment was made. Now here's one great thing about Joe Gibbs racing is Joe Gibbs and his people operate this organization kind of like he operated the Washington Redskins. They have a depth chart and if one of their top tire changers or tire carriers or crew chiefs gets suspended, injured, is called off, they have depth. They know who's going right in that position, who will practice with the team all week. And I think that's a system that's been emulated by several teams since Joe Gibbs Racing put that into place well, here. And they're just showing how, what the quality of their depth is right now by being out there out front leading. Denny Hamlin stays out. Now, when he comes in, because we know he can't make it all the way, but uh, Kyle Busch definitely gave up a lot of time. That's what you're going to give up. Those others that came in, pit for four tires, they have a more uh, grip during that run. So when this whole thing unwinds here, they're going to come to pit road. Kyle Busch should get the lead back, but he's going to lose the lead here in the green. This morning, Larry had some really interesting stats on what you can do to stretch your fuel mileage here and how much it can gain you. Yeah, it is interesting, Mike. They have it down to a science. If you don't shift and you run 80% throttle, that's rough. You're going to lose a second per lap, but you can increase your fuel mileage over a fuel run by 10 laps. Wow. So the rule of thumb, the formula is for every four laps you do that, you gain a lap of fuel mileage. Interesting strategy all the way around. So Denny Hamlin is coming. How about his teammate Daniel Suarez? He's going to stay out. Matt. Great depth chart at JJR, but also not one to shy away from picking up some great veterans. When he, Cherry, eight year all star retired, they picked up Ben Fishback, Opie from Hendrick Motorsports to come over. You can see the chassis adjustment and an air pressure change. The 11, Denny Hamlet's of the car was just tight down in one, but especially in three, giving up way too much time. Now Suarez led that lap, but Kyle Larson blasted past him to take the lead. California kid out front in the Pocono Mountains of PA.
won't matter. Wow. Jimmy Johnson slams the wall in Pocono. Oh, my. Running seventh. Johnson with a break problem. And Jamie McMurray has destroyed the right side of his car. Yeah, he Whose brakes that. fail? Was I it think Jimmy I Johnson talked, I think or was it Jimmy, Jimmy McMurray? I, I don't know, but I don't know. That's a hard that hit, boys. I tell you, that was a big hit for that 48 car. It looks like a pretty similar hit for this one car. As a race car driver, this is one of your biggest fears is a brake issue here. Oh, he's going to get out in a hurry. They were running seventh and ninth. And it's crash and burn for Jamie McMurray's car. When I see that right front on fire on that one car, that makes me think he may be the one that lost his brakes. I, I'm not sure yet. We'll have to take a look. But that's a, a fire in the right front, which could be from the brakes. Johnson was. And that is the first caution flag of the day, other than the stage ending caution at lap 50. And now fire at the rear of McMurray's car as well as the right front. I think I think he knew to bail out of that thing because he got out and ran away from it. Well, the cockpit is completely filled with smoke. Yeah, and that's oil that basically has come underneath the car and covered the back of the car. Jimmy Johnson takes a seat. That knocked the win out of Jimmy, uh, Jeff. That, that was a really super, super hard leak. Even though that's safer barrier, that, got it, that, that really rung his bell. Johnson and McMurray were out for a bike ride yesterday and got caught in a downpour. Yeah. Well, just. No, they, they had, to, had to stop their ride. It was raining so hard. And now look at this. Jamie hops the barrier. Good to see that he is okay. Hard hit and a big fire for his number one Chevrolet. Jimmy Johnson has caught his breath. And let's have a look at some replays. See what we can see here, Jeff. Mike. We're watching the 48 Jimmy Johnson. That's right in the braking zone. Let's see if yeah, oh, right yeah. there. You see this smoke, yeah. I, I, actually the right rear. I look like fire in the right rear. It did look like a, a failure in the right rear. He turns left trying to Ooh. get away from that wall. Heavy impact. The right side. That'll take the wind out of you. Now how what what happened here is what we've got to figure out how did Jamie McMurray get involved? I don't know how much brake fluid would have come out of that 48 car, but it could be that Jamie Mack hit something from the 48 car. Or were there any parts or pieces that flew off right. the 48 car? That is hard. That's a hard. wicked hit. Remember, we're talking 200 mile an hour down into that corner. When Johnson's car was going sideways, inside the right rear wheel was glowing bright red. You yeah, don't you often see that on the rear brake. No, I, there was some fire coming out. I think Johnson, I think it, McMurray ran over something. And that may have been brake fluid that caught on fire of those on that hot those hot parts on the right rear that was we saw it was turning red. All right, we have some audio from Jimmy Johnson's car. Uh, man, are you sure you're all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Whew, I got away with one there. And from Jamie McMurray. Brake pedal's getting pretty long again. Oh man! Gosh, they both and sound the like line. McMurray had trouble with his brakes. And guys, when you talk about the right rear, remember what I said earlier. It's always a concern. The weak link is melting that O-ring, and when you do that, all the brake fluid just runs out of the caliper.
Time for a KFC Zinger race break live here on FS1. And early Joey Logano's crew wasn't even ready. He had to come to the pit for a tire issue. Running sixth, fell to last place. Bubba Wallace in his cup debut in the 43 car, learning right away on pit road you can't speed. That put him through a pass through penalty. Bull sitter Kyle Busch wins stage one. He's led the most laps today. Dale Earnhardt Jr. missing a shift. Yeah, he's coming down the front trail. He tries to go from third to fourth, Chris, and he jams it into second. Just a mistake by Jr. He's talked about that, frustrated, doesn't know how this could happen. 30th or worse now in six races this season on Clint Boyer. Yeah, loose off the corner. These guys are running right on the edge of control. You got to have these cars really trimmed out to get down these long straightaways. Boyer had to get away from him. And our most recent caution, we've only had two. We're currently under the red flag. That's Jimmy Johnson, the only three-time winner of this season. And having some problems being able to get out of this car. He was running seventh at the time. Remember, 200 miles an hour down into that corner. Jamie Murray had a brake issue as well. Thought maybe he got caught up in some of the debris or oil, but Jamie said he too had brake issues on his number one Chevy. And for Jimmy Johnson, third time in his last six Pocono races that he has crashed out of the race. He's won here three times. And again, has the most wins so far this season, hoping that he's okay and McMurray in a hurry to get out of car that the fire started and the one car on the front got to the back in a hurry before they put it out. Yeah, and we saw Jimmy Johnson visibly shake and he sat down on that wall and, and appeared to be fine. Jamie McMurray was just getting the heck out of there. You there you see Jimmy. Anytime, Chris, you have contact like he, we saw there down into that turn, that's as fast as we go in NASCAR. That corner's tight and the angle into the wall is abrupt and that's what bit Jimmy. And earlier, as you see McMurray's car being hauled away, Jimmy complaining about some of the heat. It's gotten very hot here and some of the people on pit road dealing with heat exhaustion as well. So we'll keep an eye on the health of both drivers. Just three laps away from closing out stage two, 63 laps to go in the race and under a red flag, obviously they have to clear the track. Yeah, they'll get the track cleared and it's gonna be interesting. I don't know if this pit road's gonna be closed when the leaders come back, if they can get to pit road or not, but also strategy around this break right now. We're seeing it all over the place. Some of the guys have already pitted. They'll probably stay out here. It'll be interesting to see whose strategy pays off. That's what this place is all about with these stage breaks, how you play the right card. Now let's go back to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Still searching for his first win in this, his last season, having to deal with another disappointment at a track that he came in rather confident and he's had success on. Well, you go from here and you're trying to get it down to fourth, which is a straight down pull, but you're setting over here. So the angle, you almost have to pull away from you when you shift that gear. I hear Dale Jr. I understand how difficult that can be and how frustrating it could be when you feel like you've done the same thing over and over and then it goes into second instead of fourth and when it does that blows up the engine. Yeah we've seen Toyota have a good run here. Denny Hammond was near the front on the pre-race show. He talked about it. He has takes him a little longer to adjust to some things but he said he saw some light at the end of the tunnel and he said we'll be in the playoff like we always are. And I agree with Denny Hamlin on that. I love the speed that Joe Gibbs Toyotas are showing but I think this race could down could come down to a Chevy and a Ford. Harvick and Kyle Larson have had consistently as fast times as we've seen Kyle Busch run. I think that Matt Kenseth has, is going to have something to say about it as well. It's going to be a Ford versus Chevy versus Toyota <laughs> battle to the checkered. And Kyle Larson is your leader at the moment, followed by Kevin Harvick and Chase Elliott. Yes, and please. I need are. water. Everybody with a break, again, the red flag. You can't have enough. You can't hydrate enough. I'm telling you, Chris, I've been in that position on a hot day like this with the red flag, and you feel like a puppy dog, and your bastard's bringing you water. You're like, please, get it over here. I need that. I need that. I need a break here. I need to be hydrated. These are tough conditions. And you can't have enough water to handle, uh, thankfully, Jamie McMurray out of the car before more of that came. We've had six leaders. Four drivers already out of the race. Eight different lead changes. Kyle Larson leads Kevin Harvick, Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, and Brad Kozlowski. Lap 97, a red flag, a flag of 160 at Pocono.
Red flag at Pocono, three laps to go in stage two, and here's why the field is stopped on the front straightaway. Here we're going along here with Jimmy Johnson as low Chevrolet comes in the braking zone, 200 miles per hour, steps on the brake pedal, and something happens to the right rear brake. You see the burst of flames, that's probably fluid, brake fluid. He tries to get down the infield, comes up, backs into the wall. Thank goodness for safer bears. Here comes along Jamie McMurray, also with the brake failure as he went into turn one. You know, Mike, you go down these long straightaways and you tap the brake. As you get near the corner, you start tapping that brake to build up some pedal pressure. If you don't have time to do that and your brakes are already maybe a little questionable, I think that may be what happened to McMurray. And that car's on fire from the right front and from the rear as Jamie McMurray rolls to a halt. He is now with Matt Yoakum. He's been checked and released from the infield care center. Walk us through what happened. Yeah, um, so I didn't really even see the 48 car um, wrecking until I just went down and I got on the brake pedal and, and my pedal started to go to the floor and I had a little bit that I could kind of pump it and I thought it was going to be okay and then I don't know if I got into some oil or what happened, but I just started spinning and, and didn't have any brakes. So um, it's really weird that we kind of both had the same thing happen uh, at the same point in the racetrack, but fortunately we're both okay and uh, yeah, move on. Thanks, Jamie. Jamie. One of the things I was happy to see I know he, he got out of that car before it stopped because he had no brakes. He realized that it's on fire. He wants to get out of the car, but he can't slow it down or stop it because he didn't have the brakes. But the fire extinguisher underneath the hood, that's what extinguished the fire inside the right front of the, the car where we saw those flames. All right, let's go back to Matt. Great to see Jimmy Johnson walk out of the infield care center. Now, Jimmy, had you had any kind of braking issue before that or it just went right to the floor? No, it went right to the floor and I saw a replay inside the medical center and the, the smoke I think is uh, the brake fluid coming out of wherever, you know, whatever failed and onto the rotors. Um, I, I can only speculate that I got the brakes too hot and uh, when I went to the brakes, um, they just traveled straight to the floor. I, I didn't even have a pedal to push on. Um, at that point, I threw it in third gear and was just trying to slow it down. Um, I was heading to the grass and I was wondering why I didn't turn right and get to the wall sooner. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm fine, you know, certainly, uh, you know, a, a big scare. I haven't had a scare like that since 2000 in, uh, in Watkins Glen. But just let my, my uh, wife and kids know, my mom know I'm okay. And uh, we'll, uh, I'll go change my underwear and get ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> a great move to try to catch the, the apron, to try to catch the grass, to scrub off some speed, but also change the angle of that significant hit. Yeah, I, I told myself if this ever happened again, I would turn immediately into the outside wall and try to slow myself down. But my instincts, you know, you're looking at the corner, you look at all that real estate to the inside, and I, I pointed it down to the infield. And once I was in the grass, I was like, man, I've been here before. I should have just turned dead right in the wall and got to the wall right away. But um, you have a split second decision to make there. And fortunately, this one turned out well for me. Just an exciting ride. Thanks, Jimmy. An exciting ride. Boy, that's the understatement of the year right there. You're going to that corner at 185 miles an hour and the brakes don't work. And you end up hard and into the wall. Um, anybody up here know how that feels? Un unfortunately, <laughs> I can relate. Um, I, several years ago, going into turn one, we were having some brake issues. What you're seeing here is the mud from where I tried to go into first gear, just like Jimmy Johnson tried to go to third to slow it down, went through the infield and spun around. I went driver's side in the wall and I've never been so thankful of safer wow. bears that was that day, one of the scariest wrecks I've certainly ever been through. I think we're a little anesthetized to the dangers of racing in these close quarters at these speeds. Well, I, we, we sit up here and say, oh, they're going in the corner 204. And that sounds like, oh, well, that's no big deal. You Until see what it is? You see what happens. But what I love, and Jeff said it and, and Jimmy said it, I went to third gear. I, I, to the mindset Never of a driver at 200 it. miles an hour is I'm going, I've lost my brakes. I want to go to third gear. He said he was going to go to first gear. Just thinking that quick because you're moving at football, football feels a second headed for a wall, but you're able to make those kind of decisions and, and try to stop it from uh, hitting so hard. One of the things that's really kind of popping into my mind is the brake issues that we're seeing this year. We're seeing less downforce in the cars, higher straightaway speeds, but a lot more braking to get these cars slowed down. And the, and also some things that the teams are doing with the brakes to help the handling of the race cars. And they're popping up, becoming some, some real issues and failures
causing big wrecks like we saw with Joey Logano at uh, Kansas and now yes. here with Jimmy Johnson in Pocono. And we have 63 laps still left to run. And interestingly, Larry, this race is stopped with just three laps to go in stage two. Now what do we do? Yeah, we have a perfect storm here. And I've actually talked to NASCAR. What's going to happen when we roll the field is we'll be coming back around. There will be two to go. Remember what happens with two to go at the end of a stage. They close pit road. So pit road will be closed. We'll get one to go and we'll go back one lap of racing to end stage two. Waiting for the field to fire and giving the order that the track is clear and ready to go. Let's join Jamie Little. Well, the hard hits by Jimmy Johnson and Jamie McMurray got the attention of all the drivers that are sitting just over my right shoulder in their cars and everybody on pit road and Todd Gordon, the crew chief for Joey Logano on the radio talking to his driver after that. We've talked about this before, but I want to bring it up as a reminder. If you ever had that situation, don't turn left. Yeah, therefore. He was right next to it and he turned hard left and hit the grass on the infield. It just made his impact harder, you know? Okay. He's out. Took a lick. That's easy for a crew chief to I say. I was going to say, road. are you kidding me? I, and I'm with Jimmy Johnson. And, uh, <laughs> the only one I think I've ever seen do this, and I was so impressed. I think it was Kurt Busch one time had a brake failure, a tire failure, turned right in the wall, very minimal impact. Yes, that is what you want to do, but the driver's mind in that moment, that instinct is to turn as far away from the wall the as possible. The natural instincts, you're going to steer into the spin. I mean, that's the first thing you're going to do. You know who used to be real good at that? Richard Petty. When we'd go to the really big tracks, the really fast super speedways, Richard wouldn't run around the bottom. He'd run way up near the wall. And I asked him why. He said, doesn't hurt so much. You don't hit it so hard when you're already right up there near the wall. Experience sometimes is key. <laughs> Here's another look at Jimmy Johnson. Boy, he is carrying a lot of speed. You heard him say, the pedal went to the floor. That is a helpless feeling at 200 miles per hour into turn one at Pocono. That's a 100 mile an hour impact. Yeah, quite honestly, though, the, the way it worked out for him, he was able to get the car down in the end. Right. Here's scrubbing off a lot of speed before it went into that wall. So it may not be the best thing that he could have done in his mind, but I think it turned out pretty well for him. Both Jimmy Johnson and Jamie McMurray are OK after near simultaneous brake failure and both out of the race. The stakes couldn't be higher. Bitter rivals clash again on FS1. Clint Dempsey and the U.S. men's national team take on Chicharito and Mexico in a crucial World Cup qualifier. Now that's tonight. Coverage begins 730 Eastern on FS1. America versus Mexico. Sounds like Michael Waltrip and Daniel Suarez in pre-race. Daniel Suarez, I have a question. There's a big soccer match on FS1 this, af this evening after the race. Tonight, tonight. So uh, listen, Gran Hoyo de Football. Hoy, ¿quién gana? Yo creo que gana. I, I, I love the United States, but I have to be with Mexico. <laughs> USA! 
Mexico. 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 <laughs> All right. Yeah, that, yeah, it's always went. fun to catch up with Daniel. <laughs> Good job, bro. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> where did you learn Spanish? I was just impressed. Spanish. I want to make sure that I am speaking it properly when I talk to Daniel. Michael, yeah. you spent last week in Paris. Where did you learn <laughs> Spanish? And you know what's funny, Mike? Down on Pit Road, I was rehearsing my line to people, and they're like, is that French? Is yeah. that Japanese? What are you speaking? I couldn't tell. And it's funny because Daniel Flores said that your English is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Good one, Chris. There you go. All right. Anyway, don't forget to watch soccer after this. <laughs> Brother. What do you say we uh, dial up Brad Keselowski, see what's on his mind? Hey, Brad, this is Jeff. You got me? Yo, what's up, man? Man, you tell me. Looks hot down there. Uh, we just saw a nasty crash by Jimmy Johnson and Jamie McMurray at the same time having brake issues. Are you having any brake issues? Uh, it's hot. That ain't really helping anything. Uh, I didn't see it. It sounds like it was pretty nasty. Are they okay? Yeah, yeah, they're okay. Uh, Jimmy, it looked like a right rear. There was some fire coming out of the right rear caliper, like maybe some brake fluid that, that came out, maybe a piston shot out or something. But uh, he was okay. But, boy, it was uh, it was pretty wild to watch. Uh, tell us about your race. What's what's going on with the two-car today? Well, first off, I'm glad they're all right. It's, uh, I can see the marks from here, and I know that angle and a real good angle to be reckoned at, but uh, I think, Jeff, we're, we're okay. Uh, you know, it seems like the 18 and the 4 are, are pretty good. The 24 looks really good there at the end. Uh, but we've been kind of just hanging in this fifth spot and been trying to get a little bit more, but uh, I need just a little bit of everything to go faster. So we got uh, probably two or three more shots to work on it here, and uh, hopefully we can find just a tiny bit more speed and get up there and give them boys a run for it. All right, well, stay cool. Keep those brakes cool for us, too. Yesterday's winner, Brad Keselowski. So here we are, Larry, about to restart these cars very close to the end of stage two. Yeah, the minute they roll these cars, Mike, as I said a while ago, you know, we're going to get the free pass car around. But when we get back to this line, pit road will be closed when they come off turn three. When we get back to the line, it'll be one to go. We'll do have a one lap shootout. But I think what makes that interesting, just look at our top five in, in Brad Keselowski being one of those. Kyle Busch has... 20 plus lap fresher tires, fresher tires than those other drivers he's racing. And of course, we know when they go back racing for that one lap, it'll be for that stage win. 23 minute red flag. We are back under yellow right now. Uh, last night, the Cars 3 premiere uh, out there in Anaheim at Disneyland. And uh, in Cars 3, there's a wonderful uh, dirt track scene uh, yeah. where Lightning McQueen goes dirt tracking. And so last night, Scott and I were down in Bechtelsville. There's a sign for Grandview Speedway, one of the NASCAR Wheeling All-American Series tracks. So we went there to go see Craig Von Dorn and Jeff Strunk and all of the 358 Modifieds. Frank Cozy in his 60s got the checkered flag. Nice little third mile racetrack uh, and a great show watching those Modifieds go slideways. Oh, that's very cool. I can't wait to see Cars 3. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> He's starting to get it. He's starting to, to, to lift her. We so, need more of these drivers to experience what it's like to do Yesterday TV. on Fox, Kevin Harvick played the part of Adam Alexander or Mike Joy. Joey Logano and Clint Boyer were his analysts. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse, Eric Jones, standout job down on uh, Pitt Road. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Gosh, oh. Boyer. Well, Poor they were Boyer. waving Boyer around because he's the... Uh, the lucky dog, the free pass car, yeah. and apparently nobody told the other drivers I, try I, to clean I, off their tires. I, that's a spotter error. I mean, the spotter should have told the 42 that the 14's going by on the outside. So I, I'm, I'm somebody let the guard down there. I'm having today. Before Gosh. it was Jimmy Johnson in the turn one, no brakes. I had the same issue with Ernie Irvin. I was going by, or sorry, he was coming by me under caution one time at Richmond. Nobody told me, and I turned right in and destroyed both of our race cars. That's why communication is so important. Well, let's show you the spotter's view. It's more than 3,000 feet from uh, the top of our booth here to that back straightaway. And Kevin Harvick and his analyst yesterday kind of marveled at how far away that is and what a tough job 
the spotters have. I wonder if any of them have ever stood on the roof and been a spotter. Doubtful. Watch this. Ooh. Bam. Wasn't a heavy hit, but no, it's the, it'll I get your attention. Though. Probably more of a hit to the right front of the 14 of Clint Boyer to the wall. One to go is the signal from the flag stand. Larson on the outside, Harvick on the inside. And the leader next time by, well, next time by it'll be one, they'll get the green. Pit road is closed, but apparently that news did not reach the eight cars that came to pit lane. But the penalty is started to tail into the longest line. I'm not sure this isn't a brilliant move. On <laughs> That's what I, was, I didn't think it was a bad strategy. Hmm. So Stenhouse and Bain among the lead lap cars came in. So did Michael McDowell, Ty Dillon, and here comes Clint Boyer, yeah. who's the wave around, along with a number of cars that were a lap or more down, choosing to pit. And there's the damage to Boyer's car from the wall. Mike. So we're hearing that the spotter didn't tell him that the 14 was coming around. But you give these crew chief a few minutes like that uh, while we sit down there and stop, they come up with some different uh, approaches and strategies, kind of unintended consequences sometimes. Sure is. Here's our aerial coverage of the beautiful Pocono Mountains provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. And you asked, Daryl, where the long pond was? There well, it there is. it is. There it is. There right it is. alongside the long pond straightaway and long pond road. That's And that looks like a really long pond. <laughs> That's why you're the expert <laughs> analyst. That looks like a stream. My Mike, DW, and Jeff, those drivers pitting is not in the spirit of the intent of closing pit road with no. two to go before no. the stage. But what they did is perfectly legal, tailing along this line. Now, the only thing I'm confused by here, Larry, is, is that typically they would have closed it as a leader got to the start finish line under green. In this case, under the red flag and now caution, they decided to close it before they ever got there. And they have that right to do that, Jeff. Not rule breakers, rule, rule makers. makers. To add insult to injury, uh, Clint Boyer went on the five minute clock for that crash damage. Oh. Here we come to the Geico <laughs> restart zone. A one lap shootout to end stage two. Here we go. It's ought to be interesting. Not a lot to be gained and a whole lot to lose. Whoa! Right here. Keslowski almost turned Chase Elliott. Not a lot to be gained and a whole lot to lose. I don't want my dog in this fight. No. Wow, heck of a battle between Chase Elliott and Brad Keselowski. Yeah, Chase came and right a up pretty good battle up here for the lead. Larson, Bush with much fresher tires than Larson, Harvick, Truex, or Elliott. That should show up on this end of the racetrack, those fresher tires, but it looks like Larson is scooting away from Kyle here a little bit across the short shoot. Uh, he's got the fresher air to the nose and downforce, and Kyle Busch has the fresher tires. He's going to make a run at him. Could be a drag race here to the line. This will be lap 100. The green and white flag is in the air for Kyle Larson. And everybody gets across safely. And when I saw that restart, I might not have been able to say <laughs> I that. I don't believe it, I'll be honest. <laughs> this is just the third stage win for Kyle Larson. Riding with Brad on the restart. Whoa. <laughs> One lap shootouts. A lot of reward, a lot of risk.
Stage two is over. And on that final restart, one other driver may have made that money shift, hoping to go from third to fourth, but instead catching second gear. We'll update that story for you after pit stops. Pace car leading them around here with 59 laps to go in Pocono. And pit road will be open this time around. Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Truex, Harvick, and Elliott will lead them onto pit road. Those who choose to come in, that is. Here's Matt. And Harvick making his way to the four pit box. The guys up on the wall, Eric Maycraft, the tire changer for the front. Daniel Smith, who's been at Stuart Haas since July of 04, changing tires on the rear. A lot of concern here in the four pit because of Harvick missing that shift chassis adjustment to try to improve the balance, Chris. Kyle Larson really happy with his race car firing off late in the run, saying he's losing a bit of time down in turn one, just a bit tight. Jamie. Nice aerial shot of the 78, Martin Truex Jr. saying he's just tight and he's thirsty. He wanted a drink bottle, a Ford tire stop. That last caution messed up their whole plan, so they'll start over here. Kyle Larson leads the race off pit road. Six drivers chose, no more than that, 11 drivers chose not to stop, including race leader Kyle Busch. What do we say we dial up Kyle Larson? Hey, Kyle, this is Jeff. You got me? Yep, I got you. Well, congrats on winning stage two there. Uh, certainly a lot of different strategies going on. Look like you've got a fast race car, but now you're going to be a little bit further back in traffic. But you do have fresher tires. Tell us about what this last stage has for you. Yeah, I've been, uh, been pretty happy with our target Chevy so far in the race. Um, Chad, engineers, everybody made some good adjustments overnight. Uh, at least they tell me they made a lot of adjustments. I don't know if they actually did. But, uh, no, it's been handling really good today. Um, I felt like on that last green flag stop we had, uh, our fire off speed was really, really good. And our long run was, was still decent. Uh, I just didn't get through traffic as good as, like, the 4 and the 24. But uh, I'll clean that up and hopefully you'll be, be good here the rest of the race. Well, good luck with those crew chiefs being honest to you. Sometimes they tend to do that. <laughs> good luck the rest of the race, too. Yep, thank you. Chase Elliott said during pre-race last night on his car, they changed everything but the driver. And as you heard, it is in the pit of Kevin Harvick, where the concern is over a missed shift. Kyle Larson, stage two winner.
early in this race. As you heard, Dale Earnhardt Jr. missed the 3-4 shift, got second gear instead, and coasted to the garage out of the race. On the one-lap shootout to end stage two, coming out of turn three, it sounded as if Kevin Harvick did the same thing. Watch and listen. <laughs> I'm with him. I don't think it'll run long. I mean, those valves take pistons when it does that. When the small block Chevy was introduced in 1955, that pushrod V8 engine had a service limit of 4,000 RPM. Now they can get 9,500 of it. You can't get 12,000 RPM out of it, Matt. Mike, it got very quiet down here in the four pit. In fact, Mike Messick from Roush Yates Engines came down. He was conferring with Robert Brandt, who's the engine tuner here on the four. Because remember, when they went to the four, they hired their own engine tuners at Stuart Haas, unlike the Hendrick deal, where Hendrick provided the engine tuners. A lot of nerves here in the four. Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with tune-up. <laughs> slight driver error. It'll be 55 laps to go when they come to the Geico restart zone. And Kyle Busch, Eric Jones square off from the front row. Green flag. You've got to go all the way back to 12th position. Kyle Larson with, with those fresh four tires, about 10 to 12 laps, fresher tires for those guys. Yeah, I want to keep an eye on that four car and uh, see if, in fact, that engine is going to be able to last or not, because that was that was abusive to that engine, and, and it's sloppy to show up pretty quick. engine is still running. Sounds all right to me, but you know what happens when you float the valve like that? That's what you do. You break a valve spring, and that's not going to show up for a little while. So we just kind of have to keep an eye on that four car and see just how tough that thing is. Yeah, and how hard did that valve hit the top of that piston? And, and if so, how long it'll last? Yeah, I mean, you float the valves. That's basically what you've done. And, and the question is, did it tag a piston? Did it bend a valve? Did it break a valve spring? What kind of valve train trouble will it cause? Bubba Wallace on that caution. Again, too fast entering on pit road. Jamie? Yeah, and he came on the radio and said, that's it. I'm coming in now with one green light on the digital dash. I'm not going to speed. And they think they'll have one more stop. And right now he's running 28th. He only needs to get up and pass the 32 of Benedetto to be in that lucky dog position to get on the lead lap. So that is their plan right now to get back on the strategy with everyone else, try to finish out his first cup start strong. Well, Jamie, really the only problem he's had had been on the racetrack. It's been in the pits. Uh, these speeding penalties he's gotten going down pit road. So. Hopefully he can correct that and maybe get back on the lead lap here and get a good finish. They're one position apart. I agree with you, DW. He's done a great job on track. I mean, this is a tough racetrack. It's slick, hot today, uh, downshifts, heavy braking. Everything on track he's done has been phenomenal. Yep. Eighth place. Martin Truex Jr. working his way back to the front. There's a little trash on Kyle Busch's grip. Yes. And it's right in the area where you can see they have it open. It's not as much as we saw in Mark Church Jr.'s car earlier, but it be enough to cause him to lose that lead or, or at least keep that engine up. Look how far back he would have to drop way back to Kyle Larson, or no, actually the 21 car, to uh, get that off of his grill. I'm not sure if he wants to try that or not. And here's Danica Patrick racing toward perhaps another top 10. Fifth place for Danica, sixth for Paul Menard. One of the things I love about Danica is how she rises to the occasion at some of the most challenging tracks that we go to. Yeah, last week, Dover, top 10. Yeah, when I look at Danica Patrick, remember, she pitted at lap 87. Paul Menard pitted at lap 90. So I think what we'll do, and I think this is going to be the case with a lot of drivers, when that window opens somewhere about 38 laps to go, Chris Neville, pit road's probably going to get very busy. 
Yeah, and Danica pretty much uh, having a good run here off cycle. But the one thing she has been complaining about today is the front end of that car, just saying it's been unpredictable as she goes through the corner, just not having any confidence in whether the car is going to be tight or loose. I understand why she is good here. She came out of road racing. And what is this but a road course with all left turns? Yeah, I, I think about several drivers that run good here. Michael McDowell comes to mind, qualified well, and uh, he's running in a 16th spot. He's another really good road racer. Patrick in fifth, 4.8 seconds off the lead. Here's 12th place, Kyle Larson, Daniel Suarez. Now they are both running a little back of where they restarted. Yeah, they didn't have great restarts. Actually, Chase Elliott and Kurt Busch, who also took tires in that last stop, have gone ahead of them. And the cars that are flying are Martin Truex and Kurt Busch. They've each picked up seven or eight positions since the restart running seventh and eighth. Yeah, you're right. I miss Truex. He's also another one of those that came in for tires. Mike, when I look at this racetrack, and fans, you can too, look how, look how dark the racetrack is. This track has really got a heavy coat of rubber laying on top of it. That changes everything. It changes the way the car drives, changes the way the cars feel, and it changes the, the driver's opinion about the car and the track. See how dark it is? I mean, that's a lot of rubber been laid down here today. I like the way you see back there how you come up out, come up out of the hill back there, kind of climb the hill up and then back down. It's just a real funny feeling you get as you exit turn one. That's a great angle, great perspective. These long straightaways. Here's a guy that's got a really good perspective. This 78 car is on a tear, man. He's going somewhere. Just went by Danica. He's up to up to fifth spot. He's moving. We're going to go back to the restart beginning stage three and listen to how Tim Fito, a Kevin Harvick spotter, helped him worry less, not about the engine or transmission, but with the Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. Still outside. Half the part not rolling. All rolling out of bottom now. Still outside, top cover two by two, no pusher. Five at your right rear. Five at your right rear still. 22 is one back coming to push outside, top covered. Clear. Bottom's rolling decent. 20 outside, clear, clear. Stay low, go real low. Real low, real low with 24. Real low, good. Run down back 22, watch your bottom, watch your bottom. Don't you love that, Mike? I mean, it's such good, precise information, and the driver can respond and react to what that spotter is telling with confidence. I really like that. Well, and also they can focus out the uh, front windshield and focus on what they're doing, not lose any speed because they have those ears telling them everything is happening right behind them and right beside them. I'll tell you what, we've heard a couple of, we heard Junior, and then we heard uh, Kevin Harvick. How they, how they over revved their engines. These engines go through a pounding here, man. We're seeing about 9,500 down the end of both these straightaways and then shifting gears on top of that. Some bad news for the field. Martin Truex Jr. has climbed to fifth and he just ran his fastest lap of the race. Yeah, that car is really good right now and uh, passed a lot of cars to get there too. You can see he's in a lot of clean air, maybe even getting a little toe down the straightaways. There he is on our Toyota top performers list behind Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, and Denny Hamlin. 21 car back up here, running second again. Eric Jones having a great day in that 77 car. Led some laps on a pretty good strategy. And Denny Hamlin, a guy that's really struggled here. We see uh, Chase Elliott trying to get by Danica here, going down the back. This is now for seventh place. That's the pass. And again, that's new tires versus old. Just look at that engine. What, the, the engine takes a beating here, man, even under normal circumstances. Well, my hat's off to Doug Yates and that whole Roush Yates engine department that Kevin Harvick's car is still running. You heard that engine just scream itself right out of the frame. And yet, it does not appear to have hurt it. Yeah, and something that I heard Kevin Harvick do, it sounded like he immediately pushed in the clutch and to stop that engine from continuing to rotate. I don't know if he was able to save anything, 
and whether that this engine's going to last. But yes, I agree. I'm very impressed with the job that Kevin Harvick did right away and Doug Gates in that group with this valve train. And it sounds good. It doesn't sound like it's running on seven cylinders or that there's anything amiss. A broken valve spring is something that I'd worry about, and that's something that doesn't show up immediately. So we got to keep an eye on this thing. He's not out of the woods yet. And I like that they've not talked about it very much because that's not anything you can do much about. <laughs> Can't do anything about that, pal. We're going to go double wide here with 45 to go in the Poconos and Kyle Busch with a three and a half second lead. Forty three laps to go at Pocono. There goes race leader Kyle Busch. Here's Ryan Blaney, the second place car, four point four seconds back. Eric Jones is third. Martin Truex fourth. Let's take a look at today's Credit One Bank. Ones to watch. Jeff. Well, this driver led 51 laps here a year ago in Pocono. That's Chase Elliott. He's been so close to getting his first win. Hasn't shown that this year, but today he's got the speed. I think he might get that first win today. Jeff Martin Trex Jr. in that 78 team had to start at the rear of the field. And with the aid of only three cautions so far, they have worked their way to the top five. I think he gets his second Pocono win at the end of the day. Pit row reporter extraordinaire Eric Jones. He's been in the top five all day long. Keep an eye on that 77. He might get his first win at Pocono. Well, Kyle Busch led early. He's led often and he's leading right now, but that's not why I'm picking him. At lap 107, he ran his fastest lap of the race. That means as the track's going to start to cool off, they've got that M&M's Camry set up right. Kyle Busch wins this race. Aspiring Jedi Ryan Blaney went to victory lane yesterday as our Fox Pit reporter. He's just one pit stop away from joining Neil Bonnet and David Pearson as Pocono winners for the Wood Brothers. Here were the morning odds on our choices. Would you like a saw going out on that limb? Well, I, I want to make the big money. You there know? you go. I want to go for the long shot. I know that kid's going to win a race. I just hope it's today. Oh, it's not <laughs> if, it's just when. I, I agree. 41 to go now. And Ryan Blaney has taken about three tenths of a second out of Kyle Busch's lead since we came back from break. And, and Mike, there's another, we know this kid's going to win a race in his 21 car. They're just too good. They're too fast. Jamie. 
can you imagine if he wins today and he hasn't been able to speak a word on the radio, still using hand <laughs> communications with his team? He just put his hand on the door, crew chief, telling him Jeremy Bullen saying, let us know, are you tight or loose? He hit the door. That means he is tight. So they will adjust for that with one more stop. Mike, that may be the only team down there that could communicate that way because they've done it back in the day for that time after time. Yeah, Leonard Woods over there, he's telling them exactly, exactly how to yeah. get it done. Yeah. And if it works, they might do this every week. I'm trying to remember the pit board hand signals. You'd hold out one, two, three, or four signal, uh, fingers out the window for what you wanted for tires, and then slap the door for push and slap the roof for loose. That's 1950s and 60s. That's Doc Hudson stuff right there. Oh, yeah, you know what it is when you tap the helmet, don't you? Yes, I need a driver relief. change. I want a relief driver. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Biggest mover since the restart. Mr. Buzz that engine. Kevin Harvick is on that list behind Brad Keselowski and Kurt Busch. There with Martin Truex. Well, guys, whether you're Ryan Blaney and Danica Patrick that pitted all the way back on lap 87, Kyle Busch, our leader, that pitted at lap 90, or like the guys that pitted under that last caution, the window opens right here to be able to pit, make that green flag stop, and make it to the end. I think over the next six to eight laps, pit road will get very, very busy. Larry, we've only had one caution all day other than the end of the stages. But let me mind you, okay. our last five Pocono June races, which is when we've run 400 miles, the average of the last caution, 17 laps to go, twice in the last 10 laps. Now, we've never had an overtime here, but trust me, they're looking at the trends too, Mike. Sure. I love it when you start trends and Larry's over there going through that notebook like crazy. <laughs> and we don't know if these brake issues are over yet either. Well, the, you know, the ambient temp's coming down, the track temp's coming down. I know that's a minor thing, but every little bit helps. Sure. And so I think that might get them to the end. Now, remember, stage three is 10 laps longer than stage one and two. So the longer they run, the more apt the heat buildup is, could be a problem. It's like our second place, or uh, sorry, our fourth place runner, Eric Jones, coming to Pit Road. Hoping this is his last stop of the day. Well, somebody's got to be first. I, I tell you, the guy that comes on pit road, he's going to have the freshest tires. He's going to be running the fastest laps. That makes other people have to come to pit road, maybe sooner than they want to. There's a Suarez. He's on pit road. Jamie? Tip of the hat to crew chief Chris Gale. I mean, they were 22nd and 13th in practice this weekend. They qualified 15th, and he told me we are a top five car, and that's exactly what they've been all day. See them making the wedge adjustment right there. He's been working on the track bar inside the car, just building tight, but overall the car has been really good today. The 19, Daniel Suarez, you see a track bar adjustment on the left side there, a tear off, so he has clear vision the rest of this race and a four tire stop, doing a great job in his first cup race at Pocono. Now, Larry, these cars that have not been on pit road in quite a while, likely to need four tires. Here comes Ryan Blaney. The teams that didn't stop until the end of the stage, could they get by with two? I'd be nervous about two because you got a bank on running it all the way to the end of this thing. Matt. Harvick comes to a stop. No more mention about the possible engine issues. Eric Maycroft and Daniel Smith, solid work on the right side. No adjustments for the four. A couple of pumps on the jack, Jamie. Ryan Blaney tapped on the door and said, I'm tight. So they are going to loosen him up here. Four tires stop for Blaney. They don't want to mess with the two tires. They tried that earlier and had an issue. It was indeed a cut tire. Blaney's down. And it's funny they said that don't, don't complain about the engine in a four car. The last guy that's going to complain about it be the driver. I can tell you that. And here comes the leader, Kyle Busch. He's led 90 laps today, four times for 90 laps. Nobody else has led more than 20. Has the last pit stall, as most pole sitters choose. So it'll be an easy exit. Kurt Busch is also in. So is Chase Elliott and many of the leaders coming in, Matt. Hamlin chasing his fifth win here at Pocono, back in contention thanks to his teammate, T18, using their setup today. No adjustments on the right side, but on the left side they do, Jamie. Pocono has been the bane of Kyle Busch's existence. Perhaps today his luck changes without his crew 
approaching a four tire stop. He's happy with the balance and the 42 down and away as well. So now the cars that are out on the oldest tires are Ty Dillon, Ricky Stenhouse, and Michael McDowell, who were last in lap 98 before the stage ended. You know, it, when you got it all, you got it all. That Kyle Busch, he gains time when he makes pits. He gains time getting into the pit box or in on pit road. And when he leaves pit road, he gaps everybody. That There were cars that were pretty close to him. He gapped them all. So Martin Truex, who's already been to victory lane this year, is the new leader with Kyle Busch having stopped from Brad Keselowski, Matt Kenseth, Austin Dillon, and Clint Boyer. Almondinger, Kane, and Wallace on pit road. Chris. And we see Casey Kane working his way to pit lane. Overall, pretty happy with the balance of the race car, but he has been complaining about the brakes since the beginning of the race. Those last couple laps, he says he's having to pump them up every lap. Usually, think, Mike, that's from where you you worn the pads down. There's not a lot there, so you got to hit that pedal to get the get the pressure built up. It's still got brakes, but it's not as a you can't just go to it one time. You got to pump it a little bit. Yeah, when we heard Dale Earnhardt Jr. earlier in the race say, "I'm out of brakes," it's just he had a long pedal. He was having to pump those brakes, probably a little bit of overheated fluid, a little bit of air in the line, as well as you know maybe some wear on those on those pads. Well, I've seen every pit stop, uh, Jeff. Guys, when they come in, I mean, I can't believe the amount of brake dust that comes out of the right front wheel when they make the tire change. It goes everywhere. Michael McDowell is in. He's been a top 10 car all day, maybe the race of his career so far. He's, he's done a great job all weekend qualifying really solid throughout the race qualified 11th. I mean, it just like you said, Mike, he's had a stellar day. So now there are only nine drivers who have not stopped during uh, this final stage, but one driver did not have an error free stop Larry. Yeah, Chase Elliott in that 24 car at lap 125. You're going to see everything goes pretty smooth on the right side. The tires come off the same time tires go on. But where you're going to see the trouble is right over here on the left front. Very slow on that left front. 15 and a half seconds. That's why now he is all the way back to 16th. Well behind the drivers that's already pitted. Matt. And the 20 of Matt Kenseth making his probably last stop of the race. And unless we get a caution late in this run, the car, much of the day, has just been a, an issue of fighting grip, especially on exit. So now just seven drivers have not stopped during this final stage among the lead lap cars. And look at Martin Truex headed for pit road. Yeah, Truex has lost about a second and a half a lap, the last two laps to Kyle Busch on fresher tires. Kozlowski will pick up the lead if he stays out on track. Tire violation for Almondinger. Loose tire got away. Jamie. Martin Trix Jr. in a brand new car here this weekend. Just been, been building tight as the runs go on. Let's see if they're going to call an audible here as we saw the 22 had only taken right side, but they will stick with the four tire call. Matt. What a run by Austin Dillon in the middle of stage one. He lost his air conditioner, his AC unit went out. They told him to flip the switch, try it. It never came back on. He's been fighting a tight race car much of this event. Neville. Clint Boyer back on the lead lap. You can see that damage to the right rear of that car. That was from contact in the wall off turn two. That car was pretty loose after that, but you can see they fixed it up and stayed in the car working much better. So now just four drivers on the lead lap have not stopped. The first three, Keslowski, Ty, Dillon, and Stenhouse, plus 10th place, David Reagan. Well, the longer you stay out, the pressure tires you're going to have, the less fuel you're going to have to take, but you're getting further behind all the time. NHRA drag racing is going to start over on FS2 from Old Bridge Township Raceway Park, English Town, New Jersey. Final round coverage will start on FS2, and then when our telecast here at Pocono is concluded, it'll move to FS1. And I know that Brad Keselowski is really good at saving fuel, but he's not that good. There's no way he can make it to the end, so he will be coming to pit road. Guys, when I look at Brad Keselowski, Ty Dillon, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the top three that's not pitted yet like everyone else, I think they know the only way they're going to beat Kyle Busch is you're going to have to do something different. 
I think they'll maybe try to go another eight to 10 laps. If a caution comes during that time, everybody else is gonna have to come for four tires too. So I think there's a method to their madness right here. They're gonna have to do something different if you wanna win this race. Say, what about just taking two tires? Just coming in, getting enough gas, get to the end, two tires and try to get out and, and maybe maintain the lead. If you ran another 10 laps, you'd only have 20 to go. I'm not gonna rule it out. Yeah. Now, Martin Truex was seven seconds behind Kyle Busch prior to pit stops. He lost three seconds on that stop to the driver who's led the most laps today, Kyle Busch currently in fourth. And some of that was just tire grip, being on older tires. We heard him talk about the bounce of his car getting tighter, but also where he started losing a lot of time is all these other cars that had, came in and put four tires on, as they came back out, they're starting to catch him, pass him. He's basically having to let them go and race with them, which was costing him even more time. Let's go back to lap 98 when pit road was closed right after the red flag and they brought them around to give them one to go and the only penalty was start the tail end of the longest line. That's what Ty Dillon's number 13 and Ricky Stenhouse's number 17 did. Not much of a penalty. They're currently second and third. When you're on a strategy, a different strategy than everybody else, sometimes it takes discipline to do what Jeff said. Let those guys go. We're not racing them. All right, Fox double wide coverage for you with 28 laps to go in Pocono and Brad Keselowski leading. With Michael Waltrip, Chris Meyer, it's time for an eBay Motors race break live with inside 26 laps to go at Pocono. You're looking with Brad Keselowski, the leader over Kyle Busch. And Michael, everybody has played their strategy earlier through the first couple of stages. Keselowski knows he has to pit and gamble because of the speed of Kyle Busch. You got that right, Chris. And that's exactly what his crew chief, Paul Wolf, has done. He's left him out there trying to get a caution, get Kyle Busch in a position where Brad has a bit of an advantage. That advantage is shrinking quickly. This 18 car is the fastest car in town. He's been that way all day long, making up a lot of ground on Brad right now. Kyle Busch, for his career, surpassed the 13,000 laps led mark only 11 drivers have done that he's led the most laps in this race michael the last four times he's done that kyle bush has failed to win the race and of course winless so far this season but let's also look at martin truex jr a two-time winner who had to start at the back of the pack the only toyota that's had success in victory lane this year yeah and he's come a long way chris obviously he's raced his way into contention the 78 car over the last five or six laps i don't know if kyle bush is bush is being conservative on his tires but truex is a lot faster they've overcome 
overcome that penalty by starting in the rear. And just ahead of him, Ryan Blaney. Think about Blaney. He hasn't been able to talk to his crew all day long. How do you make adjustments? How do you keep that car on point? They've been able to do it, but right now, the fastest car on the track is Truex. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. coming into the pits. Ryan Blaney or Eric Jones running up front. Maybe a first-time winner. Three drivers have scored their first career win here at Pocono. And it's because of decisions like this. Crew chiefs know they've got to use strategy in order to take over the fastest car. This kid, though, how about these two? They've been solid all day long. Eric Jones right up toward the front. Chase Elliott has been a part of the story all day long. It's so cool to see these kids looking for their first win to be in contention. And Jimmy Johnson with brake failure crashing out of the race and also a shifting issue and an engine issue for Dale Earnhardt Jr. out of the race early as well. And we also saw Kevin Harvick have the same issue, hitting second gear instead of fourth. I cannot believe the engine in that four car is still running. And he's running sixth with Kyle Larson right behind. That's your eBay Motors race break. Let's head back upstairs with Jeff Darrell and Mike. Thanks, Chris. 23 laps to go. Here's our Bush race summary. Brad Keselowski, your leader by 10 and a half seconds over Kyle Busch. He's the first of 23 cars on the lead lap. We've had eight leaders, 11 lead changes, and just three cautions. Two of them ended the stages. Just 12 laps of yellow so far today. Stage winners, the Kyles, Bush and Larson, as we watch the eighth place battle between Chase Elliott and Eric Jones. Mike, just a quick little update here for you. Remember back to Daytona, Kurt Busch, he won the Daytona 500, and he only led the final lap. Austin Dillon won the Char at Charlotte. He only led the final two laps. Ryan Newman, he won Phoenix. He only led six laps. Last week at Dover, Johnson only led seven laps. Only three times this year has the car that's led the most laps won the race. Right now, that car is Kyle Busch. He is sewed up leading the most laps. He's led 90. Third place. Oh, we saw Mark Truex Jr. get really loose. He tried to get to wow. the rear bumper. Blaney, Blaney gets loose off the corner, but Truex drove in there pretty deep, got loose as he got to the center of the corner. And I think I think Truex is the potential spoiler for Kyle Busch. Of course, Keselowski, if this strategy plays out, he's going to have to pit here pretty soon. That, that might go away. But the spoiler, I think, is Mark Truex Jr. Now, if this thing goes green, I don't see him catching Kyle Busch. Whoa, whoa. If the caution comes out, he has a fast enough race car to race his way possibly to the lead by Boy, Kyle Busch. And here he goes by the 21 of Ryan Blake. But, but Jeff, he is pushing right now. He is going hard. He saw him get a little loose. He stuck that nose under the 21. He's going to make the pass here. Mark Truex is on a tear, and he's driving hard right now. And Brad Keselowski, now that David Reagan has pitted, Keselowski the only car that has not stopped in this stage. You see all these cars, Mike, you just saw the 21 off turn one over there, the back end snapping out. Everybody's pushing hard for the end of this race. And, you know, Mike, you talked about how after that pit sequence, when Kyle Busch came and got tires versus the 78, 10 seconds, that's been taken down now between Kyle Busch and the 78 as the two comes to pit road, down to about seven seconds. Let's see what the two does here. This is going to be very interesting. The leader is in, Matt. And Mike Brad Keselowski was telling his team the car is free on entry. It's not as tight anymore from center to exit like he'd been fighting much of the race, especially late exit. Will be a four tire change. Air pressure adjustment here on the two. Would love to see Larry Mack's late strategy as far as possible cautions. That's what these guys need. A little trouble on that left side. I think their real strategy was needing that caution to come out and hoping that enough laps had been put under green on these other cars that they decided to come in and he wouldn't lose any track position. Yeah. Not a great stop. Race leader now Kyle Busch 7.6 ahead of Martin Truex and watch on the left rear. Oh and caution is out. Casey Kane. Hold it up there. Just stop if you're all right. You think it's smoke? You okay? I can't stop. Yeah, again, probably Sounds a brake like issue. Possibly brakes. There was smoke from that car going into turn one. That is three of four of Rick Hendrick's Chevrolet have come to grief today with mechanical issues. 
See him smoking. Now he was able to do what Jimmy Johnson talked about much earlier in the breaking zone. He knew he had an issue now, whether it was a break or tire issue, I'm not really sure. We know he couldn't come to a stop, but he was able to react and turn right and not take that big heavy impact we saw to Jimmy Johnson. Breaks was what Casey Kane said over the radio. Yep. Mm. We're at that point in the race, Mike, when they're all right on the edge, borderline. Officially, this is the fourth caution of the day. It comes one lap too late for Brad Kozlowski's strategy. Eh, we'll see. Might work out pretty good. This has actually created quite the tangled web when I'll you bet. think about it. Because, yeah, if you've pitted within about the last, say, 10 or 12 laps, which would really include Mark Trex Jr., Matt Kenseth, you know, a, a track, track position clean air is still key. But think about Kyle Busch, 15 laps on those tires, and we're going to have to go another 15 laps. So this is, I think, one of those situations where waiting it out a little bit may have paid dividends. We know Keselowski's going to stay out. Well, you see some parts and pieces like from a brake rotor that's smoking back there that these cars had to avoid and try not to run over. We saw Kyle Busch make evasive, take evasive action to try to avoid that. So the only benefit here for Brad Keselowski is right at this moment, he has the freshest tires on the racetrack. He would likely not pit. Everybody else could. He might get improved track position. I think you're going to find that he may be a, a lot of these. They got to get tires. They, they just Maybe can't the, stay out. They got to come and get tires. I think he's going to be right near the front. Yeah, if they choose to come in. It's going to oh. work. <laughs> oh, man, it fell right into their wheelhouse. Yeah, I think you're going to see some staying out. I think you're going to see some four tires. And we may, Daryl, to your point a little earlier, possibly right sides only. That's what I'd get if I was thinking about track position. So we have 24 lead lap cars counting A.J. Allmendinger, who will get the free pass. What is Martin Truex thinking? Two cars going to smell like a rose here, so I think we got to pitch and be able to beat them by four. <laughs> I think he's right. Now, see, I think if everybody stayed out, then he'd be, I don't think Brad Keselowski can win, but the problem is at least half of these guys that are out there are going to come in because they know Brad Keselowski is behind them on fresher tires. All right, pit road is open. Here's a Canadian Grand Prix spoiler alert. Turn down your volume if you're not watching it previously. But the Haas Formula One team in Canada for the third straight race and fifth time this year got a point paying result with a top 10 finish. And that's so, big. Uh, that's a lot Jones. of money to those teams. A lot of money. I give the real spoiler. My, my buddy Lewis Hamilton won that race. All right. Spoiler over. Pit road is open. Kyle Busch stays out. Well, he's got a fast car, but I don't know about that. Matt. Harvick in the four car, brand new Ford for this event. So the car was just twitchy, borderline on grip. This is also a huge benefit for Denny Hamlin. He had a loose wheel on the 11. Jamie. Well, you heard Martin Truex Jr.'s radio saying they need to pit if they want to compete with the 18. The 18 so happy with the balance of his car. 78, a four tire stop here. 21, Ryan Blaney is in still no communication on the radio. A wedge adjustment there. He says he's loose, he tapped the roof. We'll see if he can stay in top five in contention. Two I'm, tires for Eric Jones. I just wonder if Kyle Busch's crew chief was here today, if he would have chosen to stay out. Uh, that, that's something we'll never know, I'm sure. But uh, we do have a substitute crew chief on that 18 car today. Well, what we're going to find out is how good is Kyle Busch's race car and how good is he? He's really good, but he's not as good as those four good years. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> Those four Mr. Feel Goods, that changes everything. Tough spot, uh, tough stop for Ty mm. Dillon. He uh, overshot his box, had to stop and back up. Jeff, so I'm, I'm Kyle Bush, and I look over, and, and, and Keselowski's going to be right beside me, and I'm going to say, does he have four tires? Because <laughs> I don't. Remember, you don't know what the others are going to do, and you know that they're going to do the opposite of whatever you do as the leader. So, so far this week, Kevin Harvick has been commentator, racer. Does he have another budding career as golfer? Or is it son Keelan? Keelan, I think. Whoa. Keelan's got it. He's got a swing. <laughs> Beginning Thursday, the world's greatest players battle to be crowned America's champion in golf's can't miss major of the year. The 117th U.S. Open begins Thursday on Fox.
FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Now, Mike, you might have thought they were at a golf course, but they were in their backyard. <laughs> Jamie? Well, Ben Bayshore is the interim crew chief for Kyle Busch, usually he's the race engineer. You guys opted to stay out there. The guys coming for you took four tires. Is the car balanced and the car good enough to hold them off? I hope so. Um, we sort of took it easy there and tried to save a little bit for the end, so hopefully it works out. It was, we just can't give up the track position right now with uh, with only 15 or so laps left. And the two just pitted, so um, we could be a sitting duck, but that was our only play to keep the lead. It's been a great day for Kyle Busch looking for his first win here at Pocono. Mike? And talk about, you know, I know where that golden horseshoe was that Jimmy uh, Johnson apparently lost this week. I think Brad Keselowski <laughs> picked it up because the caution came right after he pitted, and look where he is. Well, he's had anything but that golden horseshoe the last few weeks. If you think back of the trouble that he's had, so uh, maybe this is kind of karma getting back on his good side. But in Ben Bayshore's defense, he was in a box. Everybody is going to do opposite. When you've got a car that dominant, the only way you're going to beat it is you're going to have to go opposite. When he stayed out, I think that opened the barn door wide open for a lot of guys to hit pit road. Other than Brad Keselowski, he's on brand new tires right now. But you got the fastest car. You come down, you get four tires. You're going to drive by everybody. Well, you got the fastest car, or at least two. Well, I think if even as good as Brad Keselowski has been, having those four fresh tires, if he had to come through 10 or 12, I know he did it in the Xfinity race yesterday, but to come through all those drivers with only what, 16, 15 laps once we go green, that was gonna be a big challenge. Coach Gibbs up on the pit box for Kyle Busch, Ben Bayshore calling the shots because Adam Stevens, his tire carrier and tire changer, under suspension for losing a wheel at Dover for the strict reading of the Rent NASCAR rule book. Same thing happened in the truck race uh, there at Dover Friday night. Joe Gibbs Racing did not appeal. And, you know, Austin Dillon won the 600 at Charlotte with a new crew chief. Here's Kyle Busch out front with the substitute crew chief. Well, Joe Gibbs is saying, what do we got to do to get a win? <laughs> they, they've been fast. Just haven't pulled it off yet. The rule was intended to keep teams from putting on not enough lug nuts. But there you can see no lug nuts got installed because the air gun did not reverse between tire removal and installation. So Kyle Busch went out with no lug nuts at all. Off came the wheel. Now they were able to continue even despite that damage and finish the race. There's the horseshoe. What color is that horseshoe? horseshoe? <laughs> Not golden, that's for sure. Out the Pocono infield with 15 laps to go. Joe Gibbs Racing's Toyotas winless so far this year. Kyle Busch leading. Denny Hamlin in 10th. Matt Kenseth 13th. Aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours from Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Big crowd on hand at this vast speed plant and solar farm here in eastern Pennsylvania. Pocono with a great green initiative. Leading NASCAR tracks in that regard. And hey. Kyle Busch wants to get this party restarted right up there against Brett Bodine and the pace car. <laughs> Look at Brett. He said, yeah. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> yeah, just cleaning off any debris that may be on there from riding under caution. And I wouldn't worry about any of that. I'd just be worried about them four tires I got. That's what right I'd now, be worried I wouldn't about. mind having a little bit of debris on that nose. <laughs> give me, a little give me something to work with here. 15. And I believe I'd love for this caution to last a lot longer. Yes. <laughs> He's thinking about spinning oh. out the pace car to make it last longer. <laughs> All right, let's join Matt Yoakum. And the first thing that Paul Wolf said to Brad Keselowski when that caution came out, this is exactly what you need to be back in this ball game. A whole new race for you guys. Yeah, I mean, when it came down to it, we needed to get track position, and this was kind of our play, and you, you hope you get the cautions right. Um, it seemed like the last couple of adjustments in Mineral Light Ford has been a little faster. So now that we got the track position uh, with the fresh tires, hopefully it'll pay off. One to go. Let's listen in as Kyle Busch and his team made the decision not to pit. Taking uh, engine line is here. 
And let me translate. What? That means stay out. <laughs> Baseball coaches, they have signs they get from third base. Football coaches, they have signs they get from the sidelines. You can't do signs from pit road, so you have to have code words. Thank you, Angelotas. Today at Pocono, stay out. And I can tell you what the code word for Martin Truex Jr. was. Just do whatever they don't do. <laughs> Getting ready for the final restart and some sad news to pass along. Vic Edelbrock Jr. Uh, who ran the company and heard it from his dad who created the slingshot manifold for the flathead Ford and helped invent hot rodding. Well Vic Jr. took that from a half million to a hundred million dollar business. His intake manifolds are on almost every NASCAR race car and he was an avid vintage racer loved racing with historic Trans Am. Passed away Friday out in California left a huge impact on racing and on the collector car hobby and will be missed. When they come to the green, 13 laps to race in the Poconos. Kyle Busch hoping for his first win of the season. His Toyota takes the outside against Brad Keselowski's Ford. Now Eric Jones right behind in the second row has two fresh tires. Most everybody behind him has four. This is a recipe for one of those seven wide runs down the front straightaway on the restart. Oh yeah, this is the, the two cars. They are in the catbird seat, but there's look at these by, right behind me, the 77 to 21 and the 78. Those are fast race cars. And Kevin Harvick, who buzzed the motor with a missed shift. Well, not thinking about that now. You run it till it goes or blows. He just cleared her out real good. Oh my gosh, <laughs> did he ever? He's just thinking, don't do that again. No. <laughs> It'll be 13 to go. That pace car better get out of the way because they're going to be coming. Green. Kyle Busch certainly got the start he wanted, but so did Eric Jones. Three wide, bringing his teammate. This could be. Cause some problems for Keselowski. Keselowski got a terrible start. And a big funnel going into turn one. Truex boxed in behind the two. And NASCAR has the restart under review. I thought Keselowski really laid back a long way just to be sure that he didn't make a mistake on that restart. I thought it was a pretty good restart, guys. NASCAR agrees. The restart is clean. Bush, Blaney, Jones, Kozlowski, Harvick, the front five. Boy, Kozlowski just not going anywhere. Here comes Harvick by him now. So uh, they didn't have a lot of speed. They did have a great strategy, but it's not going to work. Well, what, what he needed to have happen is have an excellent restart and be right there on the heels so we could see some smoke further off of turn three. Bubba Wallace, he needed to be right on the bumper of Kyle Bush coming through turn one. Instead, he pulled back into the clutches of those with pressure tires. Michael McDowell oh, got oh, trouble in trouble. 43, and they just told Wallace he needs to get by the 32 to be in the 38 to get into the lucky dog position. Well, was that a brake issue on the 32? I don't know that what happened. Really I think they, they, were, they, they got were together. They were smoking earlier. The 32 was. I think we need to watch the left rear tire on that 43 car because they made some serious contact. Left, left front, front and the left rear DW. Yeah. Yeah. Don't see any smoke. Well, Darrell Wallace Jr. in his cup debut, running 26th. One lap down. Looks like he's okay. 11 to go. Good. Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney, half a second apart. Blaney has fresher tires. Kyle Busch has been dominant today. I tell you, the 21 car, they are uh, they are poised to win. But the guy running third is, too, the 77 car, Barry Jones. Those two guys, I know they would love to get up there and challenge that 18 car. How about Kevin Harvick in fourth? Matt. Engine out of concern, but brakes are. He played it conservative on that restart. Barreling off down into turn one, Spotter Fidoa told the cars around him that our man is going to take a little easy, so just be aware. Look at how Ryan Blaney closed he up. He is there, buddy. He's right Kyle on his bush. He's right there. He's going to be the guy that he's going to have to. Kyle Bush going to have to really, really oh, work huge hard. Huge run off of turn three. Great run off turn three. Kyle Bush did not get off that corner. And Blaney's going. Oh, whoa, oh, no. That was 
How low can you go? Man, well, tell huge you, block by the 18. 18 to a big block on uh, Blaney right there. With those fresher tires, if Blaney ever gets past, oh, he's, he's got to be able to catch him. Here. He's got him. He'll get him down the back right here. He's wow. going to out-drag him. We, it, now watch watch Kurt, uh, Kevin Harvick. Oh, my gosh. He drove me all around the apron. Took him to the infield almost. Man. Blaney has got to be saying, what do I got to do? Oh, look at that big piece of paper. Is that covering the grill on Kyle Busch's 18? But watch Kevin Harvick. He's coming into the picture. Well, these two guys running side by side. I mean, it's going to open the door for everybody. Outside. Oh, Blaney loose. Oh, he's driving the heck out of that thing. He's going to clear him. Clear Got the lead. Clear. Blaney to the front. The 21 right. car to the lead. Nine to go. There you go. Nine laps to go. This is so cool. Wow. The 21 car. Come on, Blaney. We love seeing first-time winners. Oh, it's That's not over. Here oh, comes Harvick. Harvick. Harvick gets right to the back bumper of Kyle Busch, and he's got fresh tires. I think Harvick thought they were going to wreck down in turn three. <laughs> I, I think, think he played it conservative <laughs> because he thought they were going to wreck, and I he wouldn't we, know which way to go. I think we all thought that. <laughs> first, we'll show you the block that Kyle Busch put on Blaney down the front straightaway. Here comes the 21. Got a heck of a run off turn three, right up to the back bumper. He's going to go inside, but no, you're not. I almost think Blaney would have been better off just going to the outside. I think he had a big enough run. Instead, he was able to get up to his look, quarter panel. Look right at here, Kyle he runs him off the racetrack. Run him down the back straightaway. That's two big, big blocks right there. That is Kale and Donnie material right there. <laughs> it was. But I love Blaney. He didn't give up. He just stayed in there. He kept fighting until he got the lead. This is where I thought Harvick might take him three wide into turn three. Didn't have a big enough run. That was the crowd reaction. And now Blaney has a half second lead. Harvick is coming. Just better not. Blaney better drive the next laps like he's qualifying because I yes. tell you, Kevin Harvick is right there and he's got a good car too. Kyle Busch has fallen to fourth. Eric Jones has passed. Bush. Jones also with fresh tires. Hi, Def. Just stay in the game here best we can. Let them guys get up front tight. Blaney's going to get greedy. Fourth place. Keslowski going for fourth, and Kyle Busch, who has led 100 laps today, only wanted to lead the last one. Well, I know, uh, uh, listen, I know Blaney did an incredible job to get the lead, but I tell you, a guy that's after him in a big way, that four car is inching closer to the back of the 21 ever lap. And it's very easy with this tiny spoiler in the rear uh, of these cars, really easy to overdrive the entry of these corners and make a mistake. Now, I think the only thing that will save the 21 Blaney is that Harvick's complained a little bit about his brakes. He may not be able to charge quite as hard as if he would like to. Oh, you see Blaney loose there off turn number three. He's got to got to focus, man. Concentrate. But one thing he doesn't have to do, Jamie, talk to his crew. That's right. I keep turning his radio to 21, and it's nothing but crickets. He hasn't had a radio this entire day. The team cannot hear their driver, but he can hear them. He's been using hand signals on the roof and the door to let them know what the balance has been on the car. And they've obviously communicated just fine, adjusting that car exactly where they need to be. He is leading the race and looking for his first cup victory. Yeah, Jeremy Bowens, he looks pretty calm. Everybody on the pit box looks like uh, they're in pretty good shape here. Nobody's panicking. I would want my radio to work so they could cheer me on. <laughs> go, kid, go. I, I just think also here to Kevin Harvick, he's not won a race yet this year. He wants that first win of the season. Well, he's going to get up there so and challenge. Got a young, you know, superstar, future superstar of our sport, trying to win his first race. The Wood Brothers trying to get their first win in a long time. And then Kevin Harvick, the veteran, past champion, trying to get the first win of the season. So when asked in pre-race, would the 21 win this year? What did you two say? Uh, I can't remember. I know okay. what I said. Uh, all right. And I'm going to I'm take you back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I agree with Jeff. Well, and, and you know what? What led me down that path is exactly what happened to them earlier in this race. As we see it, a change for position between seventh, Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch is the mistake that they made early. Oh, boy. The, the, listen, guys, four car got a heck of a run across the tunnel that time. He got a heck of a run right there. Matthew Benedetto slow on the apron. 
This is uh, just not over yet for the 21 bunch. They're coming to four to go. It's going to have to drive four qualifying laps here, but if you want to win this race. They've told Di Benedetto to turn off the track at the opening midway down the straightaway. But Mike, what about this 21 Blaney? He's a 20 something. Here's Harvick, and then you got Jones right behind Harvick there. He's at 20 something. So these are a bunch of young kids up there hungry. And you saw right there. That's the advantage of being in second. Even though an aerodynamic disadvantage, he saw that 21's driving really deep in the corner. He backed off E early, got a turn back to the throttle, and he keeps gaining on him down these straightaways. Boy, look at you see the hands of Blaney up on top of that wheel, elbows up right now. He's digging, baby. He's driving the wheels off. He of is. Kevin Harvick has never won here. Ryan Blaney has never won anywhere. He's trying to join Ricky Stenhouse and Austin Dillon as first-time cup winners this season. That was a good three turn to go. three. Yeah, good that, turn three for the 21. He got a nice straight shot off there. Pulled Kevin Harvick just a little bit. Held his own right there. I, I think Blaney is a little bit better in turn one. I think where Harvick is really good is across the tunnel, and I think it's because he shifted there in the 21. It. Matt Benedetto made it to pit road, so no caution. Boy, you see the hands of Blaney in there, though, Mike. I mean, he is fighting oh, that thing. Carvick's got a great run. This is where he might be able to take, use that turn, uh, third gear. I think he will. I think he'll lay back and get a nice run across this short shoot. Here he comes. See back, back to the throttle quick. Blaney held his own. Lead analyst yesterday fighting with a pit reporter. It doesn't get any better than this. Two to go. There you go. Caution. Cole Whip has brought out the caution. Not, no caution. No oh, caution. excuse me. Sorry, had a voice in my ear. No caution. We stay green. And there is Cole Whip. Get off the track. Oh, we get are still, we're get still green. Boy, this is going to be a nail biter. I, I mean, Harvick is right there. If Blaney makes one mistake, he'll get it. It's been a long time for Glenn and Leonard. I love the way Glenn Harvick, and Eddie, the Wood Brothers. I, the Harvick plays back so nice right there. Catches that third gear and really gets a nice run across his short shoot. But so does the 21 car. Cole Witt makes it to pit road, no caution. Well, look how early Kevin Harvick can get back to the throttle. Gains on through the center, but Blaney does a nice job carrying uh, that speed off the corner. White like flag, it. one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Boy, he let Blaney really drive into the corner. Nice job off of turn one for Ryan Blaney. Gapped him a little bit. Got to get across this tunnel. If he gets across the tunnel, he's got it made. The calm voice of spotter Josh Williams Ooh, for little Blaney. Loose, little loose. Here he comes. He's looking. He's looking. Oh, Harvick had to get out of the throttle a little bit. Almost got in the wall. 400 miles. It's going to come down to one corner. That flat turn three. And Blaney beats Harvick back to the gas. Harvick looks slow, and here they come. The winner at Pocono, Ryan Blaney for the Wood Brothers. Wow. What a race. Wow. I'm sorry you can't talk, Bob, but I'm so proud of you today. Congrats, <laughs> Love you. That's going to be one popular victory. Look at that team. Are they excited or what? Uh, Jeremy Bowens, that whole crowd, Lynn Wood, the whole bunch. We told everybody Ryan Blaney was going to win a race. <laughs> <laughs> a little bump from Kozlowski. Oh, nice job. How about that? First cup win in his 68th start. Finished second back at Daytona. We may get to 16. He's the 10th different winner to win in 2017. Fourth driver to get his first win at Pocono. And the 19th driver to go to victory lane for the Wood Brothers. I think he's going to have body damage when this is over with. Everybody's running up, banging on him. He didn't have any damage on the race during the race. <laughs> what a job. On his Instagram profile, he wrote, an amateur at circles and an aspiring Jedi. He's a big Star Wars fan, and he's a racer. 
pretty good wheel, man. I know that. The force was with him, Mike. <laughs> he was. Wow, you talk about a couple iconic numbers. Look at that. And you saw those cars and drivers and owners in the pre-race photo. Yeah, I told wow. Blaney, wouldn't it be cool if he, and, uh, if he and Bubba could race for the win today? But Blaney said, I just hope I win. Well, he won. Jeremy Bullins, great job being congratulated by Team Penske personnel. Look at that team. Uh -huh. Yeah. Where's my team? <laughs> Where are my boys? I think it's starting to sink in a little now. Look at this. Come on, guys. I wish they'd get on the car and ride the victory <laughs> circle like we used to do back in the day. Brian Blaney taking home the checkered flag is today's Sunoco fueling victory. He is a third generation racer. His grandfather, Lou, great in the sprint car. His dad, Dave Blaney, and his uncle, Dale, World of Outlaw competitors. Dave was champion in that series and had some success here in the Cup Series. And now Ryan Blaney is a winner. And you know what? It would surprise me if he, been, if he, if he does burn out. Because he's one of those kind of guys that want to take care of the car, take care of the motor, don't want to abuse anything. Give me the flag. Let me ride around here and enjoy myself. You got that right. Pump that fist, kid. <laughs> His fan base just went up quite a few notches. And it, it, just driving that 21 car. I mean, that's just, it, it, it's iconic. That is the 99th Cup win for the Wood Brothers. Five of their last seven wins have come from drivers getting their first victory. They have three check wins out, here. Check out his lug nuts while he's there. Neil Bonnet, David Pearson, and now Ryan Blaney. Yeah, Neil, Neil won that 21 car here, yeah. Pearson, what a, it's just, this is a great day for, uh, not just for that 21, but for the whole sport. Popular win, very popular. It was so close, 14 one hundredths of a second. But somebody had to finish second, and he's with Matt Yoko. Mike, Kevin Harvick dodged an engine scare, a brake scare. Where were you trying to, to size him up to make a move where you felt like you were better than the 21? Yeah, I, well, I just first I want to thank everybody on our uh, Bush, Jimmy Johns Ford, for uh, bringing me a good car. Got behind a couple times and had a fast enough car to, to make it back up. Um, and then I missed a shift from third to second. I, I, I just got to thank the uh, Roush Yates engine shop for uh, for building a pretty sturdy engine there because uh, it should have blown up and it never blew up. But, you know, I think um, there at the end, we just we, we couldn't get in the corner like we needed to all day. I couldn't stop like I needed to. He could charge the corner. Uh, so I needed to, for him to make a mistake and try to get up underneath him on the exit of the corner. But never made a mistake and, and did a great job and, and wound up winning the race. Harvick second again here at Pocono, Mike. A lot of drama at the end of this race. Michael McDowell had a problem, limped across the line, last car on the lead lap. And now one car has gone up on in flames on pit road. That's Reed Sorensen's number 15. McDowell had a right rear tire miss flat. But Ryan Blaney, Jeremy Bullins, and the Wood Brothers are headed for victory lane. Wood choppers. <laughs>
Man, it's a little surreal. I'm talking to Ryan Blaney at Victory Lane. Crazy, blowing my mind. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, we were leading uh, or second or whatever it was, and Elliot gave me a good push to clear it up. That zero, was which... yesterday in the Xfinity race on Fox when it was an all-driver broadcast. Ryan Blaney was our pit reporter when Brad Keselowski won the Xfinity race. Today, Brad Keselowski's fifth, and Ryan Blaney, his first career win, and Brad Keselowski nice enough to be down there to play the role of the pit reporter for the celebration. Ryan Blaney hops out of the Motorcraft Ford at Victor Lane for the first time in the Monster Energy Cup Series. Congratulations. Man, all of America's watching. They want to know this is your first cup win. You had to pass one of the best, Kyle Busch, and hold off Kevin Harvick at the end. What was going through your mind? You're in Victory Lane, man. It's hard, man, to process. Um, well, first we had to pass Kyle, and that was tough. He was on older tires, and uh, he, he was struggling off the of one, and we were able to, to get under him there. And uh, then we had to cold Kevin off. He was really fast all day, and I just didn't want to make a mistake. You know, that would have been the worst thing to do. And I got to thank him for racing me really clean. That was uh, that was really cool of him. But uh, we got Motorcraft and Ford and Quick Lane back in Victory Lane, and it's Wood Brothers' 99th win. Uh, so that's really special, and uh, that was just a lot of fun, man. 99th win, but you said it. Wood Brothers back in Victory Lane, one of the patriarch teams in NASCAR. Haven't won since 2011. You get them back. Everybody wants to know, what's the party going to be like? <laughs> well, you're invited. Uh, yes. Um, I don't know what the party's going to be like, man. We're, uh, I'm definitely going to party with these guys up here because they're, uh, I can't have a better group, and, and they do such a great job. And We've had a lot of bad luck the past month and a half, and uh, it's great to get back to where we should run. And in victory lane, we locked ourselves in the chase. That was awesome. And um, I can't thank SKF, PPG, Body Armor, uh, enough Roush Yates for doing what they do, and uh, this is really cool. Thanks. Really cool. Yes, man, this is awesome. This is awesome. Ryan Blaney, his first career Monster Energy Cup Series win at Pocono Raceway. Wow, what a day. A lot of people cheering for you. A lot of people happy for you. Back to you, Chris Myers in the booth. All right, thank you very much, Brad Keselowski. He's going to be with us on our pre-race show next Sunday from Michigan. Ford, Michael Waltrip, four of the top five spots. And what a victory as you look at the Wood Brothers. Interesting, the list of first-time Cup Series wins the drivers. And in that famed 21 car, I thought it was interesting, co-owner Eddie Wood actually has compared Ryan Blaney to David Pearson because he's so calm, and he had to be to hold off past champions Kyle Busch and then Kevin Hart. How do you think he would have felt if he could have heard that crowd cheering for him as he took the lead and streaked off to his first win? There's Chase Elliott coming to victory lane. Chris, I love the Wood Brothers. I was fortunate enough to drive for them, and I know how popular down in the garage area this victory is going to be for those guys. His first lead with 10 laps to go and held on to win 18 to 1 odds from uh, Las Vegas. Started out at 30 to 1, but Blaney another upset winner. Let's check in with another young guy with a strong finish, Eric Jones and his Toyota. Chris Neville is with him. Where Eric Jones gets his best finish of the season, his first cup start at Pocono. Eric, as you saw, Harvick and Blaney going at it. Did you think he could close the gap? Yeah, I was hoping they were going to get side by side like the 21 and the 18 did. You know, we were able to close right up on them. And, and have a shot there. Um, you know, Harvard just could never quite get up there. So I was busy holding off the two in the 41 and driving for all I could. So it was uh, congrats to Blaney, number one. That's that's really cool. It's really cool for the young guys. And um, just a good game stop Camry all day. You know, not quite a winning car. We didn't have the speed the 18 had all day or, um, you know, 21 or four, but worked at it hard all day. Uh, definitely a physical race. You know, he's shifting out here hot, um, but a lot of fun and really cool to get it a, uh, our first top five. Thanks, Eric. All right, thank you very much. Bubba Wallace at his first cup race. Fellow Ford driver who finished 26th. Ryan Blaney celebrating in victory lane. And Kyle Busch for the fourth time that he's led the most laps still did not get the victory. In fact, the three Joe Gibbs cars that led today and still no victory at this point last year. Seven wins for the racing team of uh, Joe Gibbs Toyotas, but four dominant today. Tonight on FS1. World Cup qualifier with USA and Mexico after NHRA drag racing. And the for the third time, a first time winner this year. Back in 2011, we had five first time winners, but this is an impressive list that crowds those trying to work their way into the NASCAR playoff. Yeah, no telling what we'll see next week at Michigan. Chris, we talked about speeds in the corner here at turn, turn one at over 200 miles an hour. We're going to see those over 210 next week in, in uh, Michigan. These cars will really be flying down there. And plus, the, the track's wide. You'll see two, three wide racing all day long. Well, from the start, Kyle Busch, the pole sitter, leading 100 laps. 
Kevin Harvick tried to make a move. Earlier, we saw Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. out of the picture. But in the end, Ryan Blaney had to fight off Kyle Busch and then hold off fellow Ford driver Kevin Harvick to pull in the victory lane for his first career victory and quite the victory in Pocono. For Michael Waltrip, our entire Fox crew, I'm Chris Myers, Dave Reef, and NHRA on FS1 straight ahead. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.